<laughs> but I was in there. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a brag. See, my wife was making dress. I, see, I used that shit year around dressing. Anyway, she fucked up this time. You understand? It was good, but it was just some shit missing. I said, baby, I ain't gonna put it out there to ingredients, this, but I said, listen, go get this, go get this, and go get that. She came back with the sauce. I whipped it, whipped it in the kitchen, came back. Boy, that shit tastes like butter. That shit, she just slammed it in the oven. So that's what I just got to do it anyway. But anyway, yeah, yeah I'll get to it, bro. Yeah, uh, this boy Diddy knows about. I'm here with a special guest, 903 Boxing, one of my favorite sports YouTubers. I don't even know how I stumbled across, bro, is to be honest with you. I think it, it had to be during the, the uh, the Crawford Spence. And, you know, I'm just they got me back in the box. Oh, yeah, that was going out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I just wanted to ask you this question. How'd you, how'd you stumble across YouTube and how'd you get on YouTube and in the boxing space in general? Hold on, hold on. Say that one more time now. I heard you. I just, I just was doing some shit. That was my fault. How'd, how'd you get into, uh, like boxing commentary on YouTube? Okay. Now I got, I started watching boxing commentary about two years ago. But before that, I was just looking at it a little off and on. Uh, what brought me into the YouTube community uh, was that Wild and Fury shit. Yeah, when that glove gate and all that shit hit, yeah, that, that shit brought me to these YouTube streets. And I've been in these streets ever since. And I seen all that shit and I got to looking into boxing and looking into a lot of corruptness of it and shit like that and just seeing certain shit. And I was just listening to different dudes and I was just like, like I said, my sister passed like four months before I started the channel. So I guess I was at a point where I was holding so much shit in because it wasn't it wasn't just boxing. I just wanted to be able to talk. I just wanted yeah. I just wanted to talk my shit. <laughs> whether it's boxing, whether it's anything, and don't get it twisted. I love the sport of boxing, but also I started it just to really speak my mind. Okay, okay. Could, and basically, condolences, condolences too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't want to be like nobody because it's a lot of narratives in boxing. It's a lot of followers, uh, not many leaders. And people pick up narratives and everybody just go with it. So me, I go against the grain. Like, I'm from Texas, but I can't. I'm, I'm one of the only uh, YouTubers that fuck with Spence, but I never said Bud was ducking. Yeah. When everybody, every Spence fan was saying he was ducking. I was the only one. Hell nah, he ain't. Bud ain't scared of Spence. And I lost followers behind it. All that. Yeah, when Tank went at it with Devin. I was rocking with Devin, but everybody rocking with Tank. So I, I don't mind going against the grain just to speak how I feel. Because what, a lot what of... Happened, what happened with uh, the... Because you said the Fury and Wilder. And I heard you talk about that a lot in your videos. I, you know, oh, you don't know I, yeah, no, I don't know what happened. Oh man, K roll in the goddamn drink. Listen, <laughs> uh Fatback Fury, uh to me is the dirtiest fighter of all time. Listen, Wilder uh what about three, four years ago, Wilder found him under a goddamn bridge in London and, and, and gave him millions of dollars. That motherfucker was laid out under a bridge drinking Coke 45s with needles of heroin in his arm. He was snow powder. He lost all his fucking money. His wife left him. He wasn't taking care of his kids. His wife, his wife, she was living with her parents and shit. He was strung out. He was 578 pounds, bro. And Wilder said, listen, bro, since Joshua don't want to fight me, I'm going to give you a shot. Now, in the first fight, Fury might have been on some steroids, but I don't think nothing was in his gloves in the first fight. The first fight was kind of fair. The only thing is, I felt like when when Wilder dropped him in the 12th round, instead of the story being, Wilder knocked him out. Wilder knocked him out. Instead, it became a story of Fury got up. He 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 represents Jesus and he changed his life and he's a man, he's a mentor to kids and shit. Now this motherfucker is a dope fiend, bro. He's a dope fiend that con people into thinking that he's for Jesus and God saved him from the life he was living and he rose from the dead when Wilder got him. For one, that referee, uh Jack Reese, which is a white referee, he said he done that for boxing. Any other time, bro, you get counted out when you laid out with your eyes open, looking straight in the air. Anytime you see that kind of knockdown, that's a knockout. 
But anyway, I'm going to fast forward. I ain't going to stay on that fight. But I felt like that was a knockout. But Fury actually fought a good fight in that first fight. He moved a lot. Okay. In the second fight, he go and get Sugar Hill, which is Emmanuel Stewart's nephew. He go and get him. Um, and now, all of a sudden, Sugar Hill and him, uh, he done gained 30 pounds. And they saying, we're going to knock him out. Man, why the laugh? Everybody laugh. We laughed at that shit. So, uh, come fight night, second fight, Wilder came in there stumbling, uh, staggering and shit. Uh, third round, why, uh, Fury hit him, Wilder dropped. Next thing you know, Wilder ear bleeding. Next thing you know, Wilder got a dent in his head. Uh, he's stumbling everywhere. Mark Breland throwing the towel. So, Wilder fires Mark Breland, and, uh, everybody go crazy. So Wilder come out and said, I didn't feel right. And uh, a reporter said, oh, he said his suit was too heavy. That's when Stephen A. first take everybody shitted on him. The mm -hmm. biggest story ever in the whole Wilder Fury thing is that Wilder said his suit was too heavy and that's why he lost. That was meant to shit on him. Hmm. Wilder never publicly came out and said, hey, man, my suit was too heavy. That's why it made him look like a coward of all cowards. And, and Stephen A. went off. That motherfucker hmm. got 70 million views off that shit. But everybody shitted on him when he said that. Okay. Then he come out and say, uh, now he came out and said this, uh, you, you cheated, bro. And your, your gloves was loaded. Listen, bro, his sparring partner, Nicholas Asbury, came out and said, he was mad. He said, bro, I, I was sparring this motherfucker. And I spar him all the time. He don't never hurt me. But this day in spawn, every time he hit me, bro, my, my fucking face was swole. I couldn't take his punches. So after we sparred, I went and looked at his gloves. His gloves had no pain. He said Fury was already trying. And this was before the second fight. He was already training to learn how to hit with no pain. Also, in the second fight, the cameras went off when they put on Fury gloves. The camera's supposed to be on during all them time. They cut the cameras off. Okay, so, so, uh, so with, the, with the gloves... Like uh, you said, didn't have and, no and it was what, popping everywhere. What what what's the difference between what uh Fury used and what it normally used that's legal? Um, well, for one, um, it, it it's um, I mean, it's a dude that uh, he's a photographer. This this is what made the whole glove gate uh very uh viral. And you're going to have to go back and look at it, bro. Uh, you just look up type of fear and glove guy. It's a dude who caught an angle of his gloves. You could, bro, it looked like you could see his fist completely through the gloves. And it ain't supposed, you are not supposed to see your knuckles. You could see his knuckles, bro. Like this motherfucker punching him with bare fists. Yeah, you could see his knuckles. You could see the imprint of his knuckles. And and no fighter is you supposed to see that, uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? So, and, my, and also, if you don't know, when he fought Klitschko, he popped dirty back then for steroids. So, he's been a cheat. It's just nobody ever talks about it. When he fought in America, nobody ever talk about it. No black fighter can ever pop dirty and they don't bring that shit up. Yeah. When Conor Ben came over here and fought, and he ain't even from America, they brought that shit up. They're going to bring it up every time he fight. They never bring it up when Canelo fight or when Fury fight. Both of them pop dirty. And also, it was a white farmer uh, from the UK, came out and snitched on Fury because he said when uh, Fury popped dirty, he said it was some meat he ate, some, some, wild, some wild boar, and that's why he popped dirty. The farmer came out and said, I lied in my testimony. I didn't get that boy no boar meat. He popped dirty. It was not the meat that I gave him because I didn't give him no meat. I lied for the testimony. They paid me off and shit. Like, came back and said, bro, basically, he did cheat. So, and fear snort cocaine, bro. I don't trust no motherfucker that snort powder. <laughs> you know, I, I got family members that snort powder. None of them motherfuckers yeah. say is true. Yeah, none of the cokeheads say is true. Them is the lionest motherfuckers I've ever seen. But anyway, um, I don't want to make it all about fear, but they're just a brief... And also, oh, let me yeah, say, yeah, that's, that's good. Uh -oh. I, I really didn't know. You know, I'm going uh -oh. to represent the yeah, Cavs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, well, I'm going to run you through there. Check this out, bro. Yeah. So, after the second fight is, you know what I'm saying? And Fury tried to get out of the third fight. He was trying to do all kind of other shit. But Wilder said, I want it back in blood. And he came out and publicly said, bro, you cheated me. And I got a dent in my head that I can't get out. And he said, I went to the doctors and they said, there's no way that a glove, uh, uh, a fist inside a glove could do this kind of damage that you done to my basically right 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 by his temple he got a dent a permanent dent 
When Fury has never, when you look at Fury's resume, bro, he wasn't knocking dudes out. And you don't get one trainer and in one training camp become the hardest puncher. Now when you hit Wilder, he can't take none of your punches. Mm -hmm. So in the third fight, he still got Sugar Hill Stewart. He come in heavy. Wilder came in a little heavier. And and that could that could probably be the reason why he looks so stiff. But the yeah. same result in the third, in third fight. Yeah, he looked slow as shit with that jab to the body. And and Fury, as soon as he <laughs> that jab to the body was slow as shit. I love Wilder, but that, that jab to the body was slow as shit, bro. But <laughs> but anyway, uh now <laughs> now uh when Fury hit him in the third round in the third fight, he did the same drop them. And then from the third round to when he stopped him in the eleventh round, bro, Wilder was hurt the entire time. When Wilder dropped Fury twice in the third fight, he was hurt when doing that shit. Why come I can't recover when you hit me now? In the first fight, he hit him with them same right hands, bro. Never hurt Wilder not one time. You don't go from never hurting me to now I can't take your shots. It don't happen. It just don't happen. I've never seen that in boxing. So when it comes to the Tyson Fury and the, and the Wilder shit, and I, I ain't gonna lie to you, nobody, I ain't know it. Cause I, I heard you say it in your videos and I just be like, yeah. you know, I take it as, yeah, he just, he don't, he don't like Fury. I but I'm being biased towards black <laughs> yeah. but, but, but But listen, bro, I don't knock yeah. nobody who believe what they believe. Some people may just believe Fury the shit. And and listen, a fair fat back Fury uh, is a good fighter. I don't think he great though. I think that's why he used steroids. I think that's why he had to use steroids and he had to do shit with his look because he didn't feel like he was good enough. That's what I, I think. I, I don't think because when you know when it comes to uh boxing because you know I've been watching boxing you know what I'm saying I grew up with it. Uh, the thing about boxing you can see it, like this shit certain shit pop off the screen and you I see it with Tank. That's why I love Tank. I see it with uh with Wilder, his special punching power. So I never oh, yeah. thought. Fury really could could fuck with him, but I did have questions about Wilder's just straight up boxing skill because he, you know, what I'm saying? he did kind of look a little sloppy. Yeah, and I agree. That third fight, it, it, I ain't gonna lie, it looked like Fury just kind of outclassed him in the third one. That third one, it kind of looked bad for Wilder. I ain't Check really know out. about the, the, the glove Check shit out, until bro. you said it now, though. Yo. Check this out, bro. This was crazy about it. This is the whole breakdown, bro. When you look at the second and third fight, they're very similar. The only difference in the third fight is Wilder knocked them down twice. Other than that, it was the same shit that happened in the second fight. Fury completely dominated. A lot of people act like that shit was competitive in the third fight. That shit was not competitive, bro. That shit was not competitive, bro. Every time he hit Wilder, he hurt him. <laughs> it wasn't the fundamentals. It wasn't that. It was the fact that I can't take your punches. Yeah. Every time he hit Wilder, he wobbled him. Like, Wilder you know never talk about it. Like, wh why is it not a, a main thing? When he fought, and, and, and it'll be a difference if Wilder was chinny. I watched when Luis Ortiz hurt him in the first fight, bro, in the seventh round. He hurt mm -hmm. Wilder and hit him with some combination. Wilder was hurt, stumbling all over the ring. He immediately recovered in the sec in the next round mm -hmm. and went and dropped him, bro, and stopped him in the tenth. So I've seen that Wilder real recovered. He never recovered against Fury. There was no recovery. He was stumbling from the time he got hit and dropped. He never stopped stumbling and staggering. Hmm. He was hurt. He was hurt and never recovered. Kind of like when uh, Tommy Hearns fought Sugar Ray Leonard in the first fight. But the difference is uh, Tommy Hearns outboxed uh, Sugar Ray Leonard for many of them rounds. But Tommy Hearns never recovered from that third round when he got hurt by Sugar Ray Leonard. He never yeah. recovered. That's why it was easy for Sugar Ray Leonard to stop him in the 14th. Or was it the 15th? But the point I'm making is Wilder never recovered from Fury's punches. Mm -hmm. And I, bro, Klitschko, I've seen Klitschko get knocked out multiple times. Why was Fury never able to hurt uh, Klitschko? Why he not hurting these other dudes like he hurt Wilder? Mm -hmm. He never dropped Chisora. He wasn't hurting Chisora. Like, and I know Wilder can take a punch. So it's just the punching power to me is what made the difference. The punching power, bro. He 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 punching. He punching. It'll be listen, the fire shit, the only shit that's believable, bro. When you look at how Fury fighting, he's fought it. Well, listen, bro, when you fought a certain way your whole career, it is it, it's very hard to completely change your style. He's always been a boxer.
He's always moved in box. He's never been a puncher. You don't go, you don't turn into a magnificent Sonny Liston type puncher in one fight, in one yeah. training camp. Now I know how to throw a right hand so hard that you can't recover. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. That dude shady. Any time. Oh, also he tied to Daniel Kenahan, who is a mob boss from Ireland. He's Irish. Uh, this motherfucker, a kingpin, and he on the run right now. This was your promoter. He the dope boy. On some, on some, uh, on some Pablo Escobar type shit. That's his. That was his promoter. And imagine this, bro. Imagine if Wilder was signed to uh Big Meech when Big Meech was running the streets. They would have mm. called Wilder a thug. They would have gave him a fed case. He would have went down when Big Meech went down. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm signed to you. I'm fucking with you. So I'm tied in with your drug business too. So that's another thing nobody ever talks about in boxing. They don't say this motherfucker tied to a kingpin. You know what I'm saying? He's popped for steroids before. His own sparring partner said, bro, I caught him hitting me without the patent in his gloves. None of this was brought out to... Stephen A. never talked about it. That was never brought to first take. The only thing that was brought to first take is that his suit was too heavy. So, but you know, and why they even hug Fury? And I, I disagree with that shit. <laughs> no, nah, I like that. that why do he, he, he a little more forgiving than me. You know, it came out publicly in Spawn this. Oh, 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 check this out, though. Even after the third fight, this is why I respect Wilder. Even though he hugged Fury and was like, yeah, all good, bro. Everything good. But he still stayed, man, that motherfucker a cheat, bro. <laughs> he, was, he was just talking in the gym a couple months ago. Like, he was like, uh, who you think going to win out of Francis and uh, Fury? He said, uh, I don't know. Depend on what, what he on. Hey, that's, how, that, that's, that's how it is with Fury, bro. I don't. We don't know how his performance gonna be in each fight because I don't know what kind of dope you're gonna be. I don't know what kind of fear you're gonna show up. Because mm. when he in the UK, he ain't punching like he punching in America. <laughs> <clears throat> he wasn't punching against Dylan White like he was punching against Wilder. It's a difference. And I think UK laws are a little more strict. I don't think he able to put some shit in the glove or be punching like that or. Be on the kind of steroids that I don't know, bro. I don't know what all he on. I just know he a dirty. You when you just know a motherfucker, a right motherfucker. I don't know what dope you using. I don't know your connect or your plug. I just know you a dirty motherfucker. Yeah, I know you fine motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I just know I can't trust you, bro. You know what I'm saying? And and, and make no mistake about it, bro. I don't like no drug chief. Yeah, I, I I don't respect it, bro. I I don't respect it. I don't respect it at all. That's why when motherfucker was saying, oh, bud, bud, a cheat. I, man, I debunked the shit out there, bro. And, um, you know, I'm like, nah, bro, bud ain't no shit. Shakur even said bud train harder than anybody I've ever seen train. Okay. But, uh, now, nah, why, why, why do the people's champ to me? Okay. He so, the uh, I did want to talk to you about the upcoming fights because... This is one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you. Cause I feel like boxing is kind of making like a, a mini comeback. It's going uh, down. Uh it's it's like three fights that I'm very interested in. The first one, Devin Haney versus Regis Pro. Uh I done heard you talk a lot about Devin Haney. Hey, he your favorite of the three kings, Shakur Stevenson, uh, Davis, and Devin Haney. I done heard that. Are you a tape fan, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, like your guy. yeah. I respect it. I respect it. I respect let, it. Let, let me defend my position on Tank. It's not really because of Tank, like who he is as a person. He seemed kind of too Hollywood for me, just in terms oh, of as a person. You, you impressed with what he possessed? Yes. That dynamite. Say man. Say that man dynamite. Special. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I love watching Tank fight. She once in once in a generation. I feel man, like he got he, it. his power is special, bro. That's one thing. Can't nobody take that from him. But I, I I feel your point on this too though, and I'm gonna give you your credit on this. I feel like Devin Haney moves in an old school way, like he's chasing great. Yeah. Throwback fighter, throwback fighter, I, I, throwback I really fighter. Do. And Shakur more Shakur more skilled. It don't mean I think Shakur a better fighter, but Shakur is more skilled than both of them. But I still like Devin Haney the most because I think he got the biggest heart, bro. He got the biggest heart, bro. They ain't fought nobody like Loma. He got heart, bro. That motherfucker got heart and his determination to win. So, so in your just honest boxing opinion, taking away like the outside stuff, just pure boxing, rank yeah, those three boxing, for me. Boxing. Rank those three for me. Uh, Devin Haney, number one. Okay. Shakur, number two. 
Tank number three. I know it's out, but <laughs> no. Nah, listen, listen. I'm gonna say this, bro. In my opinion, I, I, I think Devin Tuff is fighting Shakur. I don't think it's tough, and I think, I think, but Tank Danger. It's not that I'm not saying he ain't dangerous, but I think Shakur. I think Shakur beats Tank easier than Devin. I think Devin might get dropped in that fight and have to get up. Like Devin versus Tank, that's a tough fight for Devin. I think Devin wins, but he gonna get hurt. He gonna get clipped. But I think he he got that survival skills. He gonna survive, bro. And I think he gonna outbox Tank. But Shakur gonna. I ain't gonna say he gonna flush Tank, bro. But Shakur gonna Shakur gonna nine three, nine rounds to three. He gonna outbox the shit out of him, bro. He gonna he ain't gonna be able to get, he ain't gonna be able to clip Shakur in my opinion. He ain't gonna be able to. And Shakur gonna keep him mid range. I don't. He can't. I'm telling you, bro. Shakur is a bad style for Tank. Bad style. Terrible style. The tough. That's why I think Shakur, Devin and Shakur is. That's the most competitive fight to me. Between those two, but, but Devin and Tank is competitive though. Because I, I, like I said, Tank gonna hit Devin. Because Devin is not gonna just move around the ring. If you notice, Devin been standing his ground in his latest yeah. fight. He stand his ground. He will fight you. He gonna get hit by a Tank. So that's gonna be a close fight. That's gonna be like a real close fight. I think I Devin. Ask you this too. Why? Huh? Why you think? That, why you think they dissed the Devin over a uh, Loma fight so bad? Why? Why was? Oh, bro, we, bro, we we fucked up as I a people. Like a I feel like that we was a tough up. fight, and it's supposed to be like bro, that. Why didn't we just appreciate a great fight, bro? Yeah, I, bro, yeah. I never gave up. No, I never said fuck you too. I swear to God, bro, that was the fight. I, bro, I went on a two month rant. I still ain't through with that shit. I'm still mad because it took away from a great fight. It took away from a great fight. All we talking about is who won. Oh man, Loma got robbed. Oh, Loma was crying in the dressing room. Loma hurt. Bro, I was so fucking furious. Loma put. Let me tell you something, bro. Loma, I respected him before the fight and during the fight, but not after the fight. How he responded, like he got robbed and played victim and shit and used this white card. But the way Loma performed, he stepped up to the plate. Yeah. If that version of Loma fought T.O., he would have beat T.O., in my opinion. That is not that's that's not the same Loma that fought T.O. Loma fought Loma fought like he was the last fighter. It, it was his last chance. He fought, he fought Devin Haney. But the body work of Devin Haney was so effective. Everybody just slept on that shit. Them hook and he hurt and he hurt Loma to the body several times. Had him breathing hard. The, the body work. I had it a eight four. I had an eight four Devin. I had an eight four, possibly nine three, but definitely eight four. I don't think it was seven five or no draw. I thought Devin clearly won. I, mean, I just so think Long, I think I just, Loma had two, think it was uh, easy. He had two or three big rounds. He had two yeah. or three big rounds: the tenth, the eleventh, and the sixth. Yeah, I just don't think it was game. easy. The rest you know, of the fight, you know, mega fights is mega fights ain't supposed to be easy. That's why I was like, yeah, I guess. Bro, the way they look, my dog coming in. <laughs> she finna go back in there with that food. She smell that dressing, but but yeah, bro, I hear you. you gonna go talk your shit though. Talk your shit. I don't want to over talk you, bro. Oh, uh, cause I, I I had this question about uh Haney. Do you think he got enough power to hang in with with the tanks and the Shakur's and the Regis progress? Oh, does, oh. He, does he got the power? Oh, without a doubt. He definitely got enough power for Shakur. I think Devin hits harder than Shakur. I think Shakur is a more precise puncher and he has better timing. And I think he's more skilled than Devin. But I think Devin hit harder than Shakur. And I think he hit hard enough to keep Tank off him. But the question is, would he have enough power to keep Regis off him? You know what I'm saying? I think, he, yeah, he got enough power to keep Tank and Shakur off him. But Regis is another animal. He going to really... So he gonna really he gonna have to really sit down on his punches. So how you jumping from what weight to what weight to fight Regis? Huh? Uh, one forty. So he, he's going for so he he's going for one thirty five to one forty. You think that's a big big deal? Bigger than uh? What makes it big, bro? In your first fight, you fighting arguably one of the strongest one forty pounders in the division. You fighting one of the hardest punchers in the division. You fighting one of the fighters that got one of the sturdiest chins in the division. You fight one of the strongest fighters in the division, bro, in your first fight at 140. That's a big risk, bro. And in my opinion, 
I think Regis should should somewhat be the favorite because he the champ. He's bigger. He's stronger. He punching hard, bro. He got one punch knockout power in both hands, and you fighting him in your first fight. I think Devin can pull it off, but he definitely an underdog, bro. He an underdog to me. So Regis cracking. So if you had to predict the fight, what's your prediction? Like, what is it looking like? Like I said, I think I think Regis the favorite. I'm gonna be real, bro. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> he put me on the spot with that prediction. I'm gonna say it like this, bro. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, this this one of them fights, just like with Shakur and just like with Tank. Even though I'm saying I I, I pick him being Shakur and Tank, he still got to show me. It's just like with Regis, but. It's even it's a little harder with Regis because you it's your first fight at 140. Five pounds may not seem like a lot, but it's a difference, bro. When you getting hit by a 140 pounder, especially one that cracked, Devin gonna have to show and prove in this fight. He gonna have to show me that I can okay, take a so punch. You gonna have to show me that I can take a punch from one of the hardest punches at 140, and I can stand my ground and still outbox this dude. That's how you gonna okay. have to show and prove that, bro. That's easy to say, bro. Let's say Devin do get past Regis. What, what like what would you want to see next from him? Because like like you said, that would be a great win. What would you want to see next from Devin Haney? Bro, then we go get into Shakur. In my opinion, I think Devin Haney right now should give up them belts. Win, lose, or draw, bro. You're gonna be at one forty. It does not make sense to go from one forty and go back down to one thirty five. It just don't make sense. You know, like I said, I criticize fighters I like, bro. Devin Haney is holding up them belts right now. You're moving up, bro. You struggling to make 130. And I think he would have beat Loma more easier if he had been more comfortable with the weight. He too, he too big for 135. So what I'm saying is if you beat Regis, he's going to go after T.O. I know what he's going to do. That's the fight he's been won. Uh, will T.O. take that fight? I don't know. But what I would want him to do, bro, you got to fight Matias or Gary or uh, Antoine Russell. You gotta find oh. another dog. Speaking and, of that, bro, I hear you talk about Matias. Devin is surrounded by killers, bro. I, <laughs> Devin Haney is surrounded by killers. Yeah. Matias, get the, bo the boogeyman. What makes Matias the boogeyman? Because I've been hearing you say that a few times, bro. I'm gonna tell you what, what makes him the boogeyman is he got a granite chin for one. <laughs> he punching through some. It, it, I'm gonna tell you something, bro. Picture if Regis. Nah, I don't even want to say it like that. But this is what makes him better than Regis Progray to me. Like, I think Gary Antoine Russell is just as good and can beat him, but it got to it gotta be seen. But Matias, what makes him so good, he's a relentless fighter. Re relentless, he punching hard, but he got fast feet. So you're not just going to walk around and keep just overstep. He, he going to walk you down fast. Kind of how Sean Porter used to walk you down, but his feet ain't fast as Sean Porter. But he coming fast. And he coming with he got hand speed and power, and he can take a punch. Somebody got to show me that can beat him, bro. And if you know nobody's calling him out, mm -hmm. and he's a champion, but well, T.S. the boogeyman because when when nobody's calling you out, and you he he done knocked out everybody's fault. <sighs> His power is real. He a dog at heart, bro. I, I, I'm going to be honest, bro. Regis kind of, uh, he wasn't too enthused to fight Matias when they asked him about him. Nobody want to talk about him. So can that's I, what makes him the Can, can I say this? Is it because of the, uh, Matias is probably the, a hard fight and he probably won't draw in terms of money? Is that, could that be that, a reason? Or that too. That, that, that too. That too. Uh, I ain't going to lie, bro. I, I feel that I just hate. I just hate because it gives so many fighters an excuse to say shit. That's why I don't like when Sh Shakur said, "What do Frank bring to the table?" It gives fighters an excuse to duck, bro. But I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. But he a champion. Whether he bring a lot to the table, I just think if you're a champion in your division, that alone gives you uh, another champion validation to like, yeah, you should give him a shot, bro. He is a champion, so he's bringing something to the table. Do you think there needs to be more mandatories in boxing? Like, you should have, like, it should be a, okay, if you win this fight, you have to fight this guy because y'all are on the same path? Or do you, you know feel like... Up. Yeah. Uh, bro, they be... Let me tell you something, bro. You think they banging in South Central LA. 
No, nah, bro. Uh, <laughs> boxing. <laughs> this shit is Bloods and Crips, GDs and uh, folks and uh, Vice Lords and shit. These motherfuckers game bringing, bro. You got the WBC, you got the WBA, you got the WBO, and you got the IF, uh, uh, IBF. All these different sanctioning bodies, and none of them do the same shit. And all of them are tied to a certain promoter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the WBC, uh, yeah, uh, Al Heyman do a lot of, uh, uh, cause uh, that's, uh, what's that dude? Mauricio Suleiman. So, yeah. you know, Al Heyman's kind of tied in with that. That's why you get a lot of WBC titles and shit like that. So different promoters are tied in with different sanctioning bodies and different sanctioning bodies have different rules. Like some sanctioning bodies, they real strict on the mandatory. Some ain't. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, and if this sanctioning body don't want you to be able to get this belt, then they'll, they'll, they'll ex you out. And let that fighter mm -hmm. fight somebody else. Like they did with Canelo when W when Mauricio Suleiman elevated him to the franchise WBC champion. So he wouldn't have to fight Jamal Cholo. Mm. Yeah. So it's a dirty game. No matter how many rules they try to do, they bend that shit, bro. You, you know? Do you, uh, like, do you think they will benefit from doing it kind of like the UFC? Because I feel like the UFC is more mm -hmm. popular than it should be. No. Oh, you know, like, you like that? You don't like it like that? Hell no. That a white bro. That motherfucker meaner than Bob Aaron. That's a mean slave master. Hell no. See, I, I feel you. Bro, you have the money they make with the UFC? They yeah. get a lot of publicity, bro, but they pockets thin and shit. Francis and Gano had never made a million dollars, bro. Damn. <laughs> John, John, them dudes ain't making no money. Hmm. Man, some of them dudes got day <laughs> Like, but, I ain't gonna lie. Boxing it, do it, pay it, good. Boxing pay benefit. way better. Way don't better. You don't you think it'll benefit us more though? Like the fan and the uh just as Are the you talking about experience? if it was like UFC? Yeah. The only difference to me, bro, this is what it is. <sighs> to a to a certain degree, you are right. But these promoters, bro, the promoters are the biggest problem. Bob mm -hmm. Irm is 92 and he still run boxing. <laughs> He's the uh, CEO of top rank. Yeah, he the one who fucked over Ali. He fucked over Floyd. He fucked over Oscar. But everybody consider he everybody respect him. They love him. They cherish this mother long squint with those motherfuckers. Anyway, um, it's the promoters, bro. Bob don't like Al Heyman. You know Al Heyman. That's who uh, Spence. That's Wilder. You know what I'm saying? All, that's Showtime PBC. That's Al Heyman. So Bob don't like Al. Then you got Eddie Hearn. He's with Matchroom. He don't like none of them. And it's Frank Warren, Queensbury promoter. You got a lot of different promoters that. Stop fights from happening, bro. I'm not gonna let your best fighter fight my best fighter because your best fighter gonna beat my best fighter. So I'm gonna let him duck him. A lot of times it ain't just the fighter, it's the promoters. Just like Eddie Hearn kept uh, Anthony Joshua away from Wilder when Wilder was the champion. And then let him go fight Joseph Parker and then let him fight Andy Ruiz and end up losing. But yeah, he Eddie Hearn, uh, that was for Undisputed too. He kept Joshua away from Wilder. So when it's convenient for them, that's how they do, bro. So if it was just one dirty ass promoter, it'd still be dirty to me. Boxing, boxing a dirty motherfucker, and it's always been my brand. Okay, that's, so how, let, you, let, that's how you motherfuckers let, move like my boxing. Let's pretend nine oh three, you run boxing. How would you do the fights? Because hey man, I ain't gonna stand. I think that's what keeps people casual. Hey, you know, you know how I do it. Niggas fight. Yeah, you know how I do it. I do it like Don King, but the only difference. The only difference, because a lot of people don't know, Don King was a bad man. That motherfucker, that's who got that rumble in the jungle with Ali and Foreman. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to putting on great cards, like how he had Mike Tyson on the card with, and Julio Cesar Chavez on the undercard, and shit like that. I'm talking about stacked up cards. For example, like having Spence on the card as a main event, and uh, Jerron Ennis as the co-main against Keith Thurman, as the co-main to uh, Spence versus Crawford rematch. Imagine if Jerron Ennis and Keith Thurman was on that co-main. And then on the, and then right before that, you had uh, Frank Morton fight or, or some shit. That's a stacked up card. That's what Don King used to do. So I would stack up cards more. Um, I think fighters should even be paid more than what they're getting paid now. They get paid pretty good, but I think fighters should get paid more. They're risking their life. Um, but the difference is, Don King had his certain picks. Certain fighters he fucked over. I would be fair towards our fighters. Mm. I'll be fair towards our... And another thing I wouldn't do, because um, I'm, I'm me personally, you know, um, yeah, if it, were, if it was just one promoter and I was a promoter, uh, 
Foreign fighters will have to prove more before I let them come over here and be stars. That's for damn sure. Like the love they show better be, the love they show Bibble, the love they show Fury, the love they show uh, Jake Paul. Jake Paul from over here? Yeah, he from over somewhere. Oh, yeah, he from over here. Well, yeah, but he an outsider, though, but they still show him love. But, yeah, the love they show different fighters, the love they show Kovalev, Triple G. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. So, I would, I, would, I would look more towards American talent because that's how a lot of American fighters don't never get. Let me tell you something, bro. Uh, this, this is off topic because you said some. You said earlier who's the boogeyman oh, yeah, at one. This yeah. off topic. You said who's the boogeyman at one fifty four. A lot of people think Tim Zoo. Uh, he's a hell of a fighter, but I ain't gonna call him the boogeyman. He's just calling out Jamil Charlo. You just calling out one fighter. I'm gonna tell you who could possibly be the real boogeyman. They never talk about him, and I ain't gonna lie. He uh, he uh fought Patrick Day years ago, and uh, the dude died in the ring. Charles Conwell. He's at 154. Nobody talks about him. He's not a big name, but he's undefeated. He's a hard puncher. He can box. Nobody talks about him, though. So that, that's what I'm saying. Uh, a lot of times, it's not about how good of a fighter you are. It's the attention you get. See, over here in America, these promoters, they pick certain fighters. Nobody even talks about Charles Conwell. But that's just one example. It's a lot of fighters that's really, really good. Oh, Shaqie Foster. He's at 130. A hell of a fighter. Nobody talks about him. So I, I would I would put more attention on American talent. Because look at how big of a star they made Triple G. But his first 20 fighters, they put him in there with a bunch of bums, but they was black fighters and it looked good. The the black fighters were swollen and muscled up and shit, and they looked big and shit. But they couldn't, they was B-level fighters, and he was knocking them the fuck out. That's how Triple G became a star in America. That's how he became a star. They gave him 20 bums. And then he got the Canelo fight. So, and Canelo got 30 bums in Mexico before he came over here and became a huge star. They put him in there with Sh Sugar Shane Mosley, an uh, old Sugar Shane Mosley, an uh, old Miguel Cotto. He lost to Laura. So, I'm just showing you how they let fighters come over here and become stars and neglect the black fighters. Yeah, that's really what I'm saying, black fighters. They neglect the great black fighters. And because you see, it's only one star at a time. Right now, it's Tank. You know, Bud done got a lot of attention since being Spence, but it's Tank. That's it. Shakur and Devin are stars, but it's only one superstar. It can only be one black superstar at a time, and I'm noticing that. I did want to talk about Shakur versus Delo Santos, and then I want to talk oh. about Shakur versus Frank Martin. Because the, the thing, because you just, uh, with Frank Martin, I seen your video, and he was defending himself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I do think I do think Shakur. I don't I don't like him. Not a thing. I I ain't really a big fan of Shakur. I oh, seen Shakur? a little bit. Of, Tell him about in the ring, in the ring, or outside the ring. I, I you know, with me, if I don't like yo, I, I just don't. I, I just don't I, like him. I just don't hey, like so him. you have a hard time separating the character from the skills. See, yeah, I, I'm gonna tell you something, bro. I don't like Tank outside the ring. I don't like Tank as a person. Let me tell you something. When Tank said him versus Inouye is a dream fight, but then when he comes to Devin and Shakur, they don't bring nothing to the table and nobody know him. That self-hating ass shit, I can't stand it. But in the ring, he one of my favorite fighters. Hmm. Tank is one of my favorite. I can separate the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? When that motherfucker tried to wear Canelo gloves and shit, I can separate the bullshit. How he went to look up to a Mexican and don't look up to no black fighter. I could separate him from that because he, I could, I could look at him in the ring. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I just feel like but, he was the one I heard about. Heard of at least. I, I huh? heard of Shakur. I feel like I was hearing about Devin Haney more while he was coming up. I was hearing about yeah, Tank Devin Haney was always something. a bigger name. He was always yeah. a bigger name. He was always, and 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 that's why I think Shakur is jealous, bro. Devin is always. Listen, check this out. This the code. When you think about it, bro. Think of this. Shakur, Shakur is older than Devin. He's like the big brother. They was homeboys. Shakur slept on the man uh, father couch. They sparred together. And Shakur used to always get the best of Devin. Always, he was like big bro. Devin admitted it. His father admitted it. But as Devin got older, he got better. And he started getting the best of Shakur. So Shakur went to the Olympics. Devin didn't get to go to the Olympics. Devin had to fight in Mexican balls in Mexico for a little bit of money. But Devin rose to the top, and he done became undisputed before Shakur. That was supposed to be Shakur getting the Loma fight, getting the Cambosis fight, becoming undisputed. So I see where the hate come from. I used to be better than you. Now you, now you look like you just as good as me, and you undisputed. You already a Hall of Famer. 
She carried jealous as shit. <laughs> but he a hell of a He jealous so, as fuck. So was the Shakur Devin Haney, was that a real negotiation? Was that a real contract? Well, yeah, he took the 25%. Because Shakur even confirmed it. And Devin Haney, it was it was never, they never, they never was able to expose and say, oh no, nah, you didn't send me no out. Shakur went on every uh on on on, on Wallow and Gilly. He he said, Yeah, that was an offer sent for 25%. But what he tried to downplay is, oh, it wouldn't, but that 25% wasn't gonna amount to no money and shit like that, which I don't agree. Hmm. 25% for four titles, bro, becoming undisputed. I would have took that deal. I ain't but gonna I don't think sound like it's worth it. I don't think he ducked. And I and I do think the fight it can be bigger and he can make more money in the future. But right now I can be undisputed and I'm already saying you easy work. Evidently you don't think Devin easy work. That's for damn show. Sure. You okay. ain't scared of him. But what, you don't what's your think definition of a duck? Because we've been hearing a lot of duck. duck, me. Frank Martin, duck, duck for me. What's a duck? Bro, it, these dude, these fighters are so sensitive these days. And nowadays it's hard to say what a duck is. Look, when you look at Devin and Shakur, bro, it's the same thing with Frank Morton. Shakur felt like he was worth more. Frank Morton felt like he was worth more than one mil. I agree. I think Frank Morton is worth more than one mil. I think Shakur is worth more than 25%. I think Shakur could have got 35, 65, but I still say the 25%, bro, I would have took it. So I don't think either one of them fighters duck, but I think Isaac Cruz duck Shakur. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, when 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 he became the mandatory and it was and they were supposed to go in negotiations, uh, Pitbull Cruz backed out of it, and his, and his promoter said that Shakur is a boring fighter. All he gonna do is run. That's a duck. Loma <laughs> duck Devin Haney when he went and became the WBC franchise champion and ended up fighting Teofimo Lopez instead. A uh, Teofimo Lopez duck Devin Haney after uh, he beat Loma and he moved up to one forty. Uh, Canelo ducked Jamal Cholo. He ducked Demetrius Andre. Yeah, those are ducks. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's ducking. So, uh, but just you know, because uh, I, think I, I want more money, in my opinion, fighters need to quit being stubborn. If I ask for more money, let's just go back into negotiations and at least see if we can work out some before we just end the shit. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like because, I think David. Uh, yeah, I think David should have said, "Okay, you don't want twenty. All right, what about 30? That that's that's the best I can do, but I give you thirty, bro. Or I give you thirty. You know what I'm saying? Or, or Shakur should have said, "All right, bro." Or his team, "All right, what about one point five mil? You get what I'm saying? Try to try yeah. to work through it, and, 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 and that way both parties are happy. Cause cause Tyson Fury, let me tell you what he did, bro. He did an eighty twenty deal against Dillian White. That motherfucker made over forty five million to fight Dillian White. That's pimping. Damn. That's pimping. Man, Dylan White made by uh what he made, uh seven eight mil or some shit. Fight Tyson Fear made forty five million just to fight Dylan White. And made another fifty million fighting Derek Chisor, a old ass Derek Chisor for the third time. Canelo made uh forty some million to fight uh Bivol. He finna make another 30, 40 million in this fight. Like, bro, they, they man, it's so many fighters get overpaid. So that's why I can understand why Shakur and Frank are saying, I want more money. This Canelo gets overpaid, bro. Hmm. He, he ain't selling out no two million pay-per-view buys and 1.8 mil. He's not, he's not as big. His last pay-per-view did 500,000, bro. Tank's selling more. Hmm. Huh. But PBC ready to offer him 70 million for his next fight or some shit. So it's just they pick and choose, bro. That's why I think I think all fighters should get paid more, especially when you become a champion and you start beating top level competition. Okay. Yeah. So how do you how do you see the record De Los Santos uh fight oh, going? Bro. I got I got I'm gonna ask I you love, about the Charlo Canelo, then your your up and coming boxes, then we can get on some black shit. I know you <laughs> but uh ah, yeah, my favorite shit. My Shakur favorite shit. And, and, and De Los Santos, how do you see that fight going? Oh man. Whew. Good fight. Good fight. Let me tell you something. Uh, Shakur is definitely the favorite because he's that fucking good. He's that fucking good. Uh, De Los Santos is in an uphill battle. Uh, Shakur is one of the most confident fighters in boxing. Um, De Los Santos, I'm going to tell you something. 
I, I'm I'm real interested to see how Shakur going to act to the speed of uh, Dallas. He's never faced that kind of speed. He haven't. Throughout his entire career, Jamel Harrington had decent. Jamel Harrington had decent speed, and he caught Shakur a couple times. Delos Santos is fast, and I, he may have faster hands than Shakur, and he got devastating power in both hands. So this fight is way more dangerous than a lot of people think. Uh, I think, but I think Shakur. I think his calmness. I think the first couple rounds gonna be dangerous. Shakur might get hurt in this fight. I think the first couple of rounds going to be very dangerous and De La Santos going to be coming at him with hard shots. And I think somewhere in the middle rounds, Shakur going to finally, finally, th th I'm going to tell you some wild shit. This fight could be some like uh, Madonna versus uh, Floyd in the first fight. It could be some <laughs> shit like that. It could turn into some shit like that where the first four to six rounds, you know, Floyd struggled a little bit and got hey. hit with some hard shit. Man, it could be one of them fights. Where, where, where Shakur in later rounds break him down and figure him out. But the first couple rounds, De La Santo, he going to have to adjust to the speed of De La Santo. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be surprising speed, bro. And, you, and I don't think he's ever been hit by nobody with the power that De La Santo's got, bro. Motherfuckers is really sleeping on the power. And I don't hear a lot of people talking about that shit. It's power, bro. Shakur going to have to fight a very strategic. And, and I, I'm very, because Shakur been walking dudes down. I'm real interested to see is you gonna try to walk De La Santos down? You are gonna have to fight a safe fight at least at least the first six rounds till you break him down and go to his body because De La Santos got good feet too. He got fast feet. He got good educated feet, fast hands, and power, bro. It's the it's it's the speed and power. Shakur has faced power. Valdez had power. Yeah, he's faced power, but speed and power that's different and accuracy. Yeah. Do you but think Shakur really wanted to fight Frank Martin struggle. or he wanted De La Santos the whole time? Nah, he just he just more understanding with uh fighters that ain't all the way black. He got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but De La Santos, he 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 you know, he African, but you know, they'll call him Latino in boxing politics. But uh yeah, Frank just another brother, so that's how we do. We don't value black fighters, black fighters are the only fighters in boxing that uh when it comes to another black fighter, they always say, what do he bring to the table? But they never say that when they fighting another fighter of another mm -hmm. coach. We are the only fighters that when it comes to a black fighter, we say, what do he bring to the table? He, he ain't selling. You know, I love Spence. Spence is one of my favorite guys, but he even said it with Sean Porter. That motherfucker said, Sean Porter can't sell out a family cookout. <laughs> <laughs> he said it on Sean with that, bro. He said it on my boy Sean. But, uh, uh, I damn, I didn't, I didn't forgot what you said. Hold on, let me shit. Let me clear my goddamn head. Uh, what you hold on? What you say again? Cause I was I was saying like just in terms of scope, like how big the fight will be. You think the fight is a bit? Cause I heard you say it's a oh, fight oh, 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 oh. no. I'm finna tell you the fight against Frank Morton is a not a whole lot bigger, but it's definitely bigger, definitely bigger. Frank Martin, Frank Martin a bigger name for one. That that's for one. Mm -hmm. But the shit talking and the cause Frank Martin a dog. Man, them face offs gonna be epic, mm -hmm. and it's more it's more of an interest. But De La Santo, okay, when it comes to skill, both are just as interesting. It, they both just as interesting. But the but the build up, De La Santos talk shit and he gonna talk shit. But it's different. De La Santo speak another language. Frank Martin and Shakur oh. talk that talk. They talk oh, that they cool. talk that rap talk. They talk that 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 shooter talk that that yeah bitch fuck you talk fuck you and all that, that it's gonna get gritty with them it's gonna be a way bigger build up then you got Derrick James in the corner oh man man listen bro that fight is bigger it's a okay, bigger fight yeah that fight against like, Frank Morton is bigger because Frank Morton and Shakur it's gonna get real gritty like they it's gonna, gonna break the club and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a bigger fight. It's a bigger fight. Mm, yeah, okay, bigger fight, bigger fight, pay per view fight. Frank Martin versus uh Shakur. It's a pay per view fight. It's just the Shakur, like I said, and a lot of fans don't even get what I'm saying. But bro, that's a big fight. Mm. Frank Martin, listen, and not only that, you know what's gonna sell the fight the most? Frank Martin mm. is is signed to uh Earl Spence. Shakur is is Bud little homie. 
Mm. They both don't be at that fight. So it's just like it's like some legacy. It's it, it just the storyline in two, bro. Mm, okay. My, homie get your, my little homie get my best gun. You know what I'm saying? That's some shit, bro. That's Ooh, some shit. You say that, they yeah, was gonna be able to say that story. I could see at the way in Bud over there with uh Shakur and Spitz over there with Frank Morton and, <laughs> and they you know what I'm saying it, a picture yeah. that shit that shit yeah. fire bro that's a fire yeah. and Shakur was already saying I'm gonna do Frank Morton like Bud did Spence you know it's gonna be some shit talking Damn. bro that that fight was bigger but Della Santos is a big fight he's not a no name but he wasn't bigger than Frank he wasn't bigger okay. than Frank okay. Damn, that's you said but, it. But, I, but, now but, I got robbed. But but yeah, and and all what uh to your question uh I think Shakur gonna beat uh De Los Santos in the twelve one twelve round. I'm gonna say unanimous decision, unanimous. But he gonna struggle in the early round, and he gonna get hit with some shit, and it's gonna he gonna have to he gonna have to really dig deep uh in them earlier rounds. So you don't think Shakur got knockout power? Yeah, yeah, he can knock your ass out. Mm. But I think I, I think Shakur and Devin Powell is like right right neck and neck. But the difference is with Shakur, Shakur throw combinations. It's like when he keep catching your ass, he gonna hurt you, bro. He mm. throw combinations. He won a very few. If you notice, Tank don't throw combinations. Tank throw one punch at a time. But w either one of them punches can clip your ass. But Shakur throw combinations. He catch you with threes and fours. That's how he stopped Jamil Hearn, bro. That's how he been stopping dudes. Throwing combinations and he's sitting down on his butt. Yeah, yeah, Shakur hit hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Shakur hit hard. He got he got that keep you up off me power, bro. De Los Santos, he he can stop he can stop De Los Santos. Okay, but I don't think he will because De Los Santos can take a hell of a punch. But with combinations, he can hurt him at times. Okay. Now, uh, this the this the most. Oh, I, this is the fight that's coming up. And I, hey, you been talking that big shit. <laughs> you talking that big shit about Canelo? Yeah. I ain't gonna stun nine hundred three. You done made me look at Canelo in a whole different light because I, 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 I don't, Cal I don't feel like I've been brainwashed. Let me tell you. Yeah, we are, all casual fans been brainwashed into thinking, bro. You know what's so sad? Uh, Triple G had. I mean, I said Triple G. Look, boy, it's the weed. Uh, Canelo uh, <laughs> against Triple G three, bro. He had Michael G. B. Jordan in the uh, locker room with him. The most famous black actor in the ring with him. And you finna fight 47-year-old Triple G for the third goddamn time. <laughs> Do you see how black folks still admire this motherfucker? That's a cherry pick. He was supposed to fight David Benavidez then. And he was supposed, matter of fact, he was supposed to rematch Bilbo. That was after he lost to Bilbo. And you still got one of our highest paid actors in the dressing room with you, uh, walking you to the ring. Michael B. Jordan ain't never walked no black fighter to the ring. Bro, we ain't. We we some... It ain't enough <laughs> bananas in the world to feed us, bro. Uh, Canelo ain't shit. We just think he the shit. Ain't just black fighters. Yeah, That's why know. people beat him so easily, bro. He didn't look at him like no superhero. He looked at him, you ain't whooped. shit. Bill whooped him. I ain't it, bro, the respect you have for a fighter got a lot to do with how you fight. Mm. Leads me to my prediction. <laughs> I'm not picking Jamel Cholo. I'm not. <laughs> you got to prove to me that you don't respect Canelo because that's the only way you're going to be Canelo is by not respecting him and punching on him like you was trying to punch on uh Tony Harrison. Yeah, you got to have the same mentality you had against Tony Harrison to be Canelo. You got to look at him just like he's another motherfucker. But he look up to him, bro. He respect him too much. I ain't going to say he look up to him, but he respect him too much. He's better. He's a better fighter. I think Canelo, I, I see, I just see this being a Canelo getting one of them wins where they're going to be back saying, uh, Viva Mexico, and he's the best. He's better than Floyd. I, man, I just think Jamel, Jamel going to respect him, bro. I hope he don't. I hope he don't. I don't trust him, bro. Fight, black fighters got to earn my trust. I trust Wilder. <laughs> I trust Spence. I trust Bud in the ring. I don't trust Bud outside the ring. Bud say weird shit. And his team do weird shit. Uh, I do not trust Bud outside the ring, but inside the ring, I trust him. Uh, it ain't but a few fighters in boxing I trust, bro. I, I, you know, I don't even trust Tank outside the ring. Hmm. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I don't trust him to fight the best. 
But the point I'm making, bro, Jamel Cholo, he he, he speak too highly of Canelo. If you hear him speak about, he hungry, he want to win, but when you show a fighter too much respect, you can get your ass clipped. And why why you think that is? Listen, uh, look at how Tony Harrison fought Tim Zoo. And look, I was like, what the fuck? Tony Harrison never tried to sit down on no punt, and he just went in there like he was scared of Tim Zoo and got knocked the fuck out. Uh, yeah, that can happen. So, if Jamel go in there half stepping, because I'm not gonna knock it. Canelo got power, and you moving up two weight division, he can clip you. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna never knock that. He can clip you. And if Jamel go in there being soft, he gonna get clipped. Mm -hmm. So that's my prediction. And I hope he win. I'm rooting for him. I don't want Canelo to win. I think he'll cheat. And I think he's going to be full of that juice. That goddamn dog food. That goddamn old Roy with that goddamn special uh, sauce in it. Yeah, he's going to be full of some shit straight from uh, <laughs> straight from the goddamn uh, Mexico. He's going to be full of that juice and he ain't going to gas out. Because I, so I know Canelo a dirty fighter. Mm. I know you're a dirty fighter. You're a dirty fighter. You pop dirty, bro. And look at Canelo's career, bro. Early in his career, he's always gassed out. But around the time when he popped dirty for their Clambuta Raw, um, and then they raised the level of it so you could use some still, uh, he stopped gassing out, bro, for like 10 fights. He just started back gassing out in his last fight. He stopped, he stopped gassing out for like 10 fights. Mm. So, yeah, he full of that dope. He get full of that dope. Because when you don't tire, hell yeah, you can throw more punches. Yeah. That's how you start getting all them knockouts. But yeah, he he definitely got power though. And I just I think he's gonna clip Jamel. I think Jamel gonna go in there and, and he's gonna have to prove me wrong. That's one how of them fights. Good is, how good is Jamel Charlo? Like I've been hearing about him. You know, he from Houston and whatnot. I got like, Jamel, how good is he? I got Jamel Charlo as a top three pound for pound fighter in boxing. Damn. Jamel might be better than Spence. I don't know though. That's still tough because a lot, of, a lot of people say, "Yeah, just because Spence lost, Spence Spence gonna be better than that." But uh, Jamel might be better than Spence, but he's definitely on the top three pound for pound. But he good, bro. He good. I I think Bud will beat him though. I think Bud will beat him. Okay. Uh, he's he's a better fighter than Canelo. Um, he cleared out his division. He he fought tough competition after tough competition. He's proven. He's a proven fighter. He took the hard road. Um, he a top three pound for pound, bro. I I probably put him like Bud number one. Uh, I put him number two, bro. Because it, it it's it's the fact that, bro, his best shit to me, bro, is the fact that in his rematches, bro, he go back in for that smoke and he finish you, bro. It, it just don't get no better. Than, and then you stop Rosario with a jab to the body. But the way he stopped, Tony Harrison had the style to beat him. The way he stopped him in the second fight, and Tony Harrison was winning the fight. When he hit him with the left hook, same left hook he caught Costano with in the rematch. He got that kind of explosiveness. Out the blue, he can knock you out, bro. Out the blue. And he got a granite chin. Jamel got a granite chin. Never been dropped, never been wobbled. So, he dangerous. And he explosive. So I got him top three. Top three. Okay, okay. And then, you know, this, this is my last little thing on the box, and then we can switch over to some, some real nigga shit. Okay. Upcoming boxers. I got some names that I want just want to go over with you because I've been hearing about okay, them, okay. been seeing them on undercourts. So I'm going to say them, and you just tell me what comes to your mind. Xander Zayas. I just seen him whoop Valenzuela ass. Xander Zayas. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Xander Zayas out of Puerto Rico? Yeah. You said what I think about Xander Zayas? Yeah. Oh, he the shit. Uh, 154-pounder. He probably finna move up to 160. He's so fucking big. He 15-0 and 0 with 10 knockouts. Uh, yeah, Xander Zayas the shit. I just think he, tw he, he only 20. He finna turn 21. Uh... I want to see him versus Jai Tucker, Jahai Tucker. Uh, that's a fight I want to see. Jahai Tucker calling him out, and I ain't heard no response. Jahai Tucker, like, he about, he about uh, 15 and 0. Um, but Sanders, how he is good, bro. And, and what's so dangerous? He's so young, bro. And mm -hmm. I I think they moving him too slow, though. A lot of people think, well, young, bro, just move. No, bro. 
You know, Mike Tyson was a world champion. What he was about 20, 21? Youngest heavyweight world mm -hmm. champion. But bro, mm -hmm. he's so young and he big as shit. He need he needs some good step up fights, bro. Or he gonna be one of them fighters that you 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 you, you keep him fighting lower level opposition for too long, and when he finally step up, he gets stopped. He needs to start stepping up, bro. Top rank moving them slow as shit. They promoting them good, but they moving them too slow. Okay, they moving them too I slow. <laughs> I got a few more names. Okay, Abdul yeah, Mace. I, like I, I wasn't too Abdul impressed with his Mace. last fight. I wasn't too impressed with his last fight. Uh, Abdullah Mason is arguably, I'm going to say it like this. It's one and two. Bruce Shushu Carrington and, and Abdullah Mason, them are my top two prospects in boxing. Abdullah Mason is five foot 11. Uh, I don't know his own reach, but he's he's a 135 pounder and he's five foot 11. And he's a southpaw and he got devastating power in both hands. Abdullah Mason is, is one of the most spectacular fighters that's upcoming in boxing, bro. He's special. He's special. Mm -hmm. Straight up out of uh, Ohio. That motherfucker's special. He's he special. Like and, 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 and when you're coming up, bro, you're going to have certain performances. But the fact that it's, it's hot, bro, he. he he just a he gon' he a finisher too, bro. And he ain't go, he ain't got but by seven five. He a finisher. Okay. Abdullah Mace, that motherfucker is a he's a he's a nice killer. Cause he smile. He's not he's not very mean, but he's a killer. Mm, and, okay. and he got he got to, I think Abdullah Mason just got too much sauce, bro. He got so the uppercuts, the his, bro, his fucking punch selection, he different, bro. Abdullah Mason different and to be five foot eleven at 135. I, I, my hopes is high and shit for him, bro. I think the world of I think the world future Hall of Fame on everything. He he gonna take over boxing, bro. Gonna take over boxing type shit. One of the best that I've seen in a long time. Cause you just spoke on One another best. dude I was gonna ask you about. Shoo shoo. That's who I got my faith in. He take seen some. he seen. It's my bro. one and two. It's my some days I say Bruce number one, some days I say Abdullah number one. But the difference, the reason why I like Bruce Shushu Carrington so much, bro, he mean. That's he the mean. He, Abdullah ain't mean. Abdullah, a knockout artist. Bruce Shushu, Shushu Carrington is a dog, and he mean. Any the thing about it, bro, he's so fucking. He can outbox you so easily, bro. But he come to punish you in every fight. I don't. I don't want to just outbox. I want to punish you, bro. And and I'm gonna fight you on the inside. And he, he got an inside game. He gonna walk you down. And I can fight on the back foot. But Bruce Shushu Carrington is mean. I, I want to say like he fight huh? Oh, he he at one thirty. Bruce Shushu Carrington from New York. Oh uh, yeah, he at one thirty. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. He's from uh, Brownsville, New York. Yeah, he's from mm -hmm. Brownsville, New York. Bruce Shushu Carrington, I, I, bro, it's hard because I, I'm just gonna tell you my top three favorite coming up. Okay. It's out of Bruce Shushu Carrington, Abdullah Mason, but at this point, I don't even know if I want to say Keyshawn Davis is a prospect, bro. Keyshawn Davis is the shit. I was going to ask you about him too. I like him too. Shit, bro, and he ain't got but about eight nine fights. But next year, in my opinion, he's already on the level of a contender status. Next year. Mm. He's that good. Keyshawn, and I didn't think it was, I, I thought it was Cal, bro. His last couple of performance, I said, that motherfucker, he already doing veteran shit, bro. You can tell he trying with Shakur. That motherfucker different. You can tell he trying with Bud. Keyshawn Davis is special. Hmm. But I I, I got out, bro. I, I, I just get excited about the prospect. But back now, to Bruce. You literally, you literally bro. going to the ones Ooh, I'm, 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 I'm looking at. Action. It's the meanness is Bruce Shushu Carrington. And I'm going to tell you another thing about Bruce Shushu Carrington that's special. Mm -hmm. He don't get hit flush. He do not get hit. He catch he catches shots with the gloves. That is a veteran move. You don't see young fighters catching shots with the gloves. He catching that shit. He catching that shit and walking you down. He catching that shit. It's hard to hit him flush, bro. He walk with that high guard. That motherfucker's special. I'm gonna tell you something, bro. Between mm -hmm. Bruce Carrington and Abdullah Mason, it's hard, bro. Them my them, them my guys, bro. Them and Keyshawn, bro. Give me shoo shoo. I ain't gonna stunt. Like like you said, that meanness it come bro. out. I it like that music. That motherfucker mean. That okay, motherfucker let me do a start bitch cut. Start bench cut. Keyshawn Man. Davis, Abdullah Mason, and Shoo Shoo Carrington. Start bench. Them, them the dudes, bro. Them are the guys. 
them are the guys. Now I got some more prospects, but them my top three. I got who some more. Start, who would you start out those three? Who would you bench and who would you cut? I'm putting you on the spot. <sighs> Listen, bro. I, I'm gonna break down all three of them. Abdullah Mason is the most talented. Oh, mm. uh, Bruce Shoe Shoe Carrington uh, is the toughest. Mm. But Keyshawn Davis, it, it's like, it's a difference, bro. They're more talented than Keyshawn Davis. But Keyshawn Davis fight like he got 20-some fights. He fight more, more like more a ready. Yeah, he more ready. He more ready. So if you're talking about right now, yeah, Keyshawn Davis ready. Mm. But if they had to put him in there with Frank Martin, I'm telling you right now. Oh boy, that was too dangerous too early. <laughs> well, now nah, he need two to three more fights before he fight a Frank Martin or uh, any of that, even a Jermaine Ortiz. I just another another year, another two or three fights. I, but I think he might be Jermaine Ortiz. Mm. But before you put Keyshawn Davis in there with Frank Martin, he need two three more fights. But Keyshawn Davis right now is more ready than uh Shushu and uh Abdullah. So you started Keyshawn. Who you benching? Abdullah Mason. Oh, uh, bro, you told me that one. <laughs> oh, no, bro, that's 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 fucked up. That's fucked. <laughs> I got a bitch one on. Yeah, uh, Abdullah. See, cause I it's the meanness. I got it's I can't count Shushu out. But but mm -hmm. Abdullah is the most talented. He's the most spectacular. Shushu's meanness, bro, it is different. How many fighters in boxing are mean like uh, uh Bruce Shushu can? You don't see that shit. His meanness pop off the screen. I ain't like, gonna like, even though Tank is a vicious puncher and he's a special puncher, he ain't mean like Shushu. <laughs> None of them dudes hit Bud mean though. I ain't gonna lie. Bud got a Bud got a mean streak, but he ain't need. I don't know, bro. It ain't too many fighters mean like uh Shushu. Shushu mean. And so, and, so and his fighter, and you know what? You know what? You remember how Tommy Hearns used to put that fear into his opponents? How he used to look at him? Shushu got that shit. Mm -hmm. Shushu remind me of Tommy Hearns a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you starting Keyshawn, benching yeah. Shushu, and you cutting Abdul? Yeah, if I had to. If I had to. If I had <laughs> okay. to That's how I fucked up how you said it. <laughs> you said, God damn. <laughs> All right, now we get into some black shit, man. Uh, so, black power. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. Ask your question, okay, bro. Okay. Because uh, I've been watching <laughs> that Slim Thug Big Freezer shit kill me, dog. Oh uh, man, I'm trying to think of what I said in that. You, you basically was like, oh, I talked about my family in that video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to ask you this question. Because I've been I've been thinking, I think like this 903. I'll be looking at shit from a bigger perspective. You know okay. how they say uh the 80s, the crack epidemic, then the 90s, all this, 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 and that. I'm looking yeah. at what's going on with black women right now when it comes to the rappers and then the reality TV side. Oh, yeah. You know, uh black women was was carrying the black community for a long time. You know, black women was making the money. They were being uh like they was rising in the ranks economically, and I yeah. feel like this that I feel like now it went from black men now they attacking black women the most the backbone of the black community. And once we lose the women, we out of there nine oh three. How you feel about that? Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. I'll be right back. You know one second. Hey, okay, you throwing me off guard. Okay, now you said <laughs> <laughs> because I'm trying to think, bro. Uh, are you? Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me make this very clear. Is that just a question you have, or are you referring to the Big Frida uh, video? Because I'm talking no, about gay, uh, trans. Um, we we can talk about that too. But I'm thinking like, oh, okay, 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 I'm, you just I'm, I'm, that. okay, I got you, I got you. Okay, I'm okay. thinking because. I'm, I think it's a conspiracy. Like, bro, I don't know if I'm crazy, but I think that shit a conspiracy theory. Like, the sexy red shit, the Suki Hana shit. Because I feel uh, like... Let me tell you something, bro. Uh, yeah. Hip-hop would done it. You know, it's sad. Um, I, I was telling my wife the other day, I said, baby, uh, a lot of women don't even know 
But if you listen to Megan Thee Stallion, you listen to Sexy, oh, not even that, bro. If you listen to rap, you damn near for the streets these days. Any female listen to rap these days, you really for the streets. How the fuck you a black woman and you listen to rap? Uh, and and that, and that go all the way since the uh what mid eighties and shit when NWA started saying uh bitches ain't shit and all that stuff. So ever since then, ever since like NWA and all that stuff. Uh, easy and all them there. Uh, we've been uh disrespecting women for a long time in hip hop. Hip hop has always been based around a uh, degrading our women. That was when it started. Mm-hmm. You know, Rick James did it a little bit back in the <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. Just. Rick James, bitch. But anyway, uh, now, nah, bro, hip hop would done it. And you know what's crazy? That that's what they they celebrated as our culture. They throw it on us. That's why all the women act like Sukiana or Sexy Red, and they try to not all of them, but many of them. That's why our women dress like that, bro. Every, we, are, we our heroes is the industry. I we are the only culture that we want to be like rappers, and we want to be like our entertainers. We want to be like our football. We want to dress like the rappers, wear our hair like nobody else. Want to be like their entertainer. Mm-hmm. Those are our leaders in our community. But they not in our community. So uh we want to be like some shit we ain't. Um and they get paid. That's why at this point, bro, I, I'm gonna keep saying it, bro. I stop listening to rap. Even oh shit, I love UGK. I love a lot of shit, bro. I love Scarface. I love a lot of shit. I even like some of these stinking ass rappers, but I quit listening to it. It's a contradiction to what I believe in. Hmm. Every rapper talks about the murder of another black man. That is the hottest topic of rap. There's nothing hotter. It ain't even getting money because trap music over with. You know, at one point it was about getting money. But the hottest topic, bro, is my my pistol, bro, and me 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 gunning you down. That's the only hmm. thing, bro. That is that is what rap music is. A bitch ain't shit, downgrading our women, and killing another black man. Those are the two hottest topics. Stun come hmm. after it. Stun that come after killing the black man and after a bitch ain't shit. So okay. we, we, now, black women are so being degraded. They just they, you see they try to call themselves a bitch and try to make it sound good. Trina tried that shit. <laughs> okay, well I'm a bad bitch. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to be a bitch, but if I gotta be one, let me just be a bad one. You know, most women uh call their homegirls bitches and shit. So we fucked up like that. We embrace bullshit. <laughs> But I'm gonna tell you something, bro. Black women are getting aggressive. Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, and what? And what? What is that? Because I, I don't uh, know if if it's uh, single mother or uh, the mm. single mother. Club. That's all. Mm. Uh, when you got a woman run a household and she's the leader and she's running the kids, she feel like she the boss. And that's why one most of them when they get with a man, you can't tell me nothing. Because I've run a whole a whole household. See, a man runs a household. When a woman runs a household, it make her think she the shit. So it's hard to tell me something. So um, it's just a bunch of confusion in our community, bro. Um, it was designed though by destruction. You take the black man out the home, bro. That caused our. That's why our kids are killers, and our women think they independent. Black women are the only women on this earth that think they don't need a man. They don't. I'm not saying as a whole, but they are. You you would never hear a Mexican woman say, "I don't need no man." But you would hear black women say that shit. They're the only group of people that think they don't need a man. So ever since the black man has been exiled out the uh, out the home, uh, through the seventies, through the eighties, and shit like that, it's become normal, and they just feel like they don't need a man. So, and a lot of that is our fault, but it was definitely by design. You know, drugs, guns, mass incarceration. AIDS, crack, I mean, what else? So they put everything in our hand and we just use them tools and destroy it ourselves. So, you know, yeah. that's what we do, though, bro. It, what's so fucked up and why I can't let it go? I'm like, oh, what's that? What's that? I just can't let go. <laughs> I can't let that shit go, bro, because people die for us. People man. fought for us, bro. People fought for us. And, you know, uh, man, oh, you was the one who come in and said, bro, yeah, I do believe in Jesus. And yeah. uh yeah, I was raised up and I was like, man, I hope I I feel bad when you said Kyle, I hope I didn't offend him, bro. Because yeah. it's not that I'm saying Jesus ain't sh- or none of that. I'm saying that the doctrine they preach, it's it's the con of it. I, I bro, mm. I tell my wife this. Cause my wife came up in the church. We both sing. Uh, like I said, I used to lead a choir and everything. I am through with the church though. And my wife goes sometimes and she says, Baby, no. I'm I, because I hold a grudge, bro, because 
Um, um, okay. When you think about the message of Jesus, which is the biggest thing of Christianity, it's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's that he died for a cause. Hmm. All that he died for, everybody, let's just say he died for his people, for the people that he was there to protect. He died for them. He died because people was lying and he came and spoke the truth. It's no different from what Malcolm X done. Hmm. It's no different. It's no different from what Martin Luther King done. I'm coming speaking the truth and I'm standing up for my people. I'm standing up against injustice. You motherfuckers are living foul. You oppressing my people. I'm fighting for my people. So if we believe so much in that, I don't hear no preacher out here trying to fight for our rights. I don't hear no preacher fighting the system, fighting the white boy, uh, trying to free prisoners. If we really stand for revolution, because Jesus was a revolutionary. Why are there no preachers that's revolutionary? Why are there no members that's revolutionary? Why we don't believe in fighting against the system? We don't speak against the death of black children every day. Why we don't do that? Huh? So, you know, it's it just crazy, bro. And most churches, uh, most big churches, black churches are paid off by the government. So they don't speak against it. But, you know, everybody's just praying right now and just uh, uh, waiting on salvation and uh, just putting money in the collection plate, bro. And just just being lied to, bro, because it's not about the Bible. People are taking scriptures out of the Bible and creating a whole religion out of that. <laughs> No, no, motherfuckers taking scriptures out about and creating a whole religion. And every time you preach, it's based off these three scriptures. You're doing that to con, just like uh, content creators. It's Boston content creators that only talk about certain things because, because they're trying to spit a narrative. Yeah. You got Smith fans that do it, Bud fans that do it, that only talk about certain things that Bud done to spit a narrative. Uh, so, so he taking up for Spence. And they do it the same way, vice versa. It's people that spit narratives. And, and preachers do it the most. Preachers do it the most. I see. You know, I seen this. I want to talk about that video you put with uh <laughs> the black Israelites in the church. Oh, you said that. something yeah, that was cold. You said it. something that was cold because I ain't never seen no preacher do that to no. <laughs> yeah, soft fat. You ain't. I ain't never seen. When last time you seen a preacher fight? Preachers don't fight. Now, back in the day, preachers. See, I when I came, I came up on the preachers that cussed in the church. Hmm. Yeah, I came up on them. Kind of, yeah, my granddaddy cussed. He gets you make him too goddamn mad. He'll talk. See, preachers used to just talk shit. That's all they did. Now preachers just try to encourage you with bullshit lies and make you hmm. think it's gonna be better one day. And that if it ain't better, it's some shit you ain't doing. If your job ain't going right. It's just some shit you ain't you ain't being nice enough to your boss. Uh, no, 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 I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I don't I don't like that black Israelite shit either. The Kyrie shit and all that. Uh, we man, yeah, man, fuck. I don't like that shit either. Man, bro. man, them white folks made Kyrie fold like a lawn chair. He folded. He tried. He came out uh, uh still. They made that boy fold. He been dribbling ever since. He ain't said nothing else about he a black Israelite. <laughs> He I don't think Kyrie know what he's talking about either, though. Kyrie said the, 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 the world is flat and all that shit. Now, nigga yeah. don't know. Nigga don't know for real, for real. But come on, Hell man. Nah. Just, the, the, the Kyrie just be talking to me. Like, he a fake revolutionary, in my opinion. Because I, I feel yeah. like he kind of a little bit more shallow than he come out. Because some of this shit he be talking about, it's like... I ain't going to lie, bro. I ain't going to... I'm going to say this, though, bro. I, I, I got to slightly disagree, bro. Because he's a millionaire. I, I look just like with Kaepernick. Kaepernick, Kaepernick stopped kneeling once them white folks gave him some money and he got that big deal. Uh, but <laughs> and, and you a suburban boy that really didn't grow up around black folks, you grew up around white folks. But I don't take that out of account that Kaepernick he stood up, bro. He sacrificed his career. He sacrificed his career to take a stance against police brutality. He a millionaire. He a rich motherfucker. He ain't got time to care about poor folks, but he spoke up. In front of them white folks. The NFL is a white boy sport. All these sports are white boys because it's ran by white boys. It's a white boy sport. And you're going to get on my motherfucking field because I own you. And you're going to get on my field and kneel against police brutality? <laughs> I don't know when the NFL su support the police. All sports support the police and whatever they do. And they support. So what I'm saying is they stood up, bro. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that Kyrie came out and said something and he didn't have to say nothing, he folded just like Kaepernick folded in the end. But the fact that you spoke out, I just wish black folks had a 
If we had maybe if we had a supported them brothers more instead of steady watching football and arguing about the goddamn. Let me tell you something, bro. I lost love. I used to be the most diehard cowboy fan. I completely lost love for the game, bro. When that shit happened mm -hmm. with Cowboys. And when Jerry Jones told them black, you motherfuckers better not kneel and none of them said nothing. I immediately said the love, all that shit, it was lost. I don't even watch the football no more. I can't even stand the watch. It, it, I used to, bro. I used to be sick if the cowboy, if the Cowboys lost, bro. I, I couldn't eat that day. <laughs> couldn't even eat that day. Baby, don't talk to me. Nothing. Nobody okay, fucked my property. Like I'm my still like that. Like, okay. <laughs> bro, I used to be sick. Literally to my stomach. I can't eat if the Cowboys lose. I'm not like that no more. I have. I ain't watched them in years. I ain't watched them since Kaepernick. Damn. I ain't watched. I immediately and I was bro. Cowboys. It, you can't. You. I was the most diehard cowboy fan. And go fight. Had fights in the pen <laughs> over cowboys. Hey, yeah, I'm a fight behind them. You can't just really do that cowboy hater shit around. I really get. I was one of them that'll really get in my feelings. Unless you just like close homie of mine. But just a random dude talking shit. I, I, I was one of them that used to get mad. I lost all love for the game, bro. I was a football player. I lost love for the game. So I, 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 seen, I seen how well behaved, and I I love boxing, bro. Boxing is my number one sport, though. I love mm -hmm. boxing, but I lose love for it when I see like Tank, bro. Like how you can say Shakur and Devin ain't shit, but you can say Monster anyway. That's my dream fight. It's how black fighters always give another motherfucker a chance, and, and how black fans ain't shit. We don't support our fighters. We just a, we just fucked up, bro. It made me say oh. fuck. That's why I rather I talk black shit. Cause I'm, I'm gonna ask you this because uh you said coming up you from Marshall Texas you was a, a former blood how'd you go from that to now you like man all this and bullshit fuck rap fuck all that like what was the transition period in that like what was that journey okay I I, I became a blood because at the age, let me tell you something I was a good boy till I was twelve uh I had mm. I had a uh and I was scary. I was scared. I was a scary little boy. Uh, but when I got 12, my life changed, bro. Uh, my pops uh, and my tea lady had a divorce. Uh, some shit was going on. I had a little brother, and my little brother was, did not belong to my father. Uh, it belonged to another man. Uh, folks separated. Uh, my pops did some fucked up shit. Uh, we wasn't allowed to see him. So I'm living with my mama. But I still want to see my pops. I was kind of a even my football coach and shit like that. And I looked up to him. But he disappointed me in many ways. But I was in a situation where my mama took a lot of shit out on me. Especially she hated my pops and hated that the fact I still wanted to see him. So she started favoring my sister. To the point where I just started feeling, bro, just I tried to stay with my auntie. She kicked me out. I started trying to stay with different people. And now I'm in the streets. Now I'm uh, getting in trouble in school. Now I'm at an alternative school. Okay, now I'm seeing a gang banging for the first time. I'm 12. I'm, uh, now I'm turning 13. I'm seeing gang banging. And it, it was mostly Crips and Marshall. Wasn't many Bloods. But I liked how the Bloods carried themselves. They was quiet, organized, more organized. Wasn't bullies. They didn't, they didn't start shit. And they were just laid back and they, you know, they had the women and they was getting more money. Oh, hmm. uh, I ain't gonna say they was getting more money because it was more Crips and way, they had way more drugs and, sh and made way more shit. But the point is, I seen them as the underdogs and I was always an underdog kind of person. Hmm. I want the ones that count it out. I want to ride with the ones that's count. That's I guess that's why I ride with Devin so hard. I ride with Wilder hmm. so hard. I ride with Spence so hard. They count it out. They, they get hated on so much. Uh, but too, but anyway, um, I want to be with the underdogs. So, shit, West Side Blood. So I'm in the seventh grade now, and I'm 13. I'm at an alternative school. Uh, I get down with the Bloods and shit. Uh, so I'm red flag everywhere. My seventh grade year, cause I ended up coming out of the alternative school. Mm -hmm. I told my mama she took me uh school shopping, seventh grade, and she said um. I right, pick out some clothes. And matter of fact, she started picking it out. And she picked out a blue shirt. And I said, no. Nah, I don't want number red stuff. She said, why? Well, um, 
you're going to have to find your own school clothes. So I was in and out of school in the seventh grade. Keep in mind, though, in the sixth grade, I made MVP of the league. I was a offensive and defensive player of the year. I was a running back. I played quarterback, too. I was a linebacker. I ran. I did the kickoff, uh, punt, all that shit. But uh, I was the best player in the league at, at, in the sixth grade, and my pops were my coach. So seventh grade, I'm in football, but I'm in the streets now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm drinking fathers and shit, because that was the thing. We, we was trying to be like them Cali motherfuckers. We drinking fathers. Uh, the Crips drunk uh, Old English. The Bloods drunk Blood Ice. And we used to call it Blood Ice. So we drinking fathers. Uh, we smoking big perfectos, uh, five dollars, three for ten, if you prefer. Uh, the big per- perfecto switches. So I'm smoking, I'm drinking. Uh, I'm fucking with older grown women. So I'm doing all this shit. So I got out of football. And uh, by the time I'm 14, I'm I'm knee deep. Uh, not staying at home no more. I'm sleeping wherever I can sleep. Sometimes I'm sleep. And man, so many nights I slept behind the projects, just behind the projects because. Yeah, so a lot of my family turned their back on me. Uh, I was labeled like a bad kid, but really I wasn't bad. I was just trying to find a home. I, my mama neglected me. Hmm. And that that's, and, you know, I love her. We got a good relationship now, but she took that out on me. Hmm. She took it out on me. And maybe she's, and she still say, you sound just like your daddy when you talk, you funny like him and all that. And maybe she just saw him in, in me and maybe why she treated me that way. And she just, she showed me the toughest love you can show somebody. Hmm. Uh, put me in jail before, too. Uh, hmm. Yeah, a lot of shit. So I went through a lot of shit with my mama. Like, it was bad to the point where one day, I, I think I even said I hated her or something. It was bad, bro. Me and my mother's relationship to the point where um, if I didn't come home, it just it just became bad. She started locking the door and shit like that. And so I just started, I didn't even want to come back home. I just started going everywhere, bro. So... 14, uh, I'm catching cases and shit, catching little shit. And like I said, my mama, I was already on probation. And the uh, I done been in jail so many times by now. Uh, we ga- we game banging, bro. We just banging. We go to the club every weekend and fight. Uh, we fight during the week. Uh, we go to, it's a blood side of the project and it's a crip side. And it's way more crips than blood. So I, I was getting jumped a lot by grown men. So uh, motherfucker don't care how old you are in these streets. Uh, grown mm-hmm. women uh, molested. Well, I was... <laughs> I ain't gonna say they was molesting me, but anyway, it's just shit like that. A lot of shit I wasn't supposed to see. Shit that I, I used to brag about this because I thought it was cool that I was so young and uh, was with grown women and shit like that. I didn't understand I was really a victim, and I was I was grown and I was hanging around OGs and shit. But anyway, uh, so in fourteen, I catch a case, and my mama, uh, you know, like I said, she ended up putting me in jail for some shit. But I was facing, uh, I was 14, and they was telling me I was going to be there until I was 21. I was going to go to TYC. I stayed in juvenile about six months, uh, fighting this case. And uh, I was like, man, you're going to go to TYC 21. And uh, I had a lot Tim Cone. Crazy how that memory worked. Tim Cone, white boy. Yeah, the only white boy ever helped me. Uh yeah, Tim <laughs> Yeah, the only, only 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 decent white boy I know. I don't trust white folks, bro. It's hard to say. I ain't even gonna say he was a good white boy. He was just a white boy that was fair. So he helped me. Uh, <laughs> he helped me. Uh, he said, he said, I'm not gonna let you go to TYCDU21. I'm gonna find a home for you. Let me tell you something. My entire family on both sides said I don't want him. He cannot because if, if they can find me a place to stay. I can I can get out on probation, but it's gonna be on the street as probation. No, ain't he? No, uncle. No, he is too bad, bro. I, I keep it in one hundred, bro. Just I, I wasn't bad, bro. I was just I, you know, these kids ain't bad, bro. They they, they they just want love, bro. They just feel neglect. They ain't bad. I stole hmm. just to eat. I didn't steal because I was bad. Hmm. Uh, anyway, um. All of them said, uh, fuck him. Uh, we don't want him. So he couldn't find. That's why I stayed in the county so long. He just couldn't find nowhere. No group home would accept me. I had a pretty bad record as a teenager. I had a lot of salt cases. I was getting a lot of trouble and shit. So, and I was always at our turn of school. And they used to make us wear orange jumpsuits. I used to have to walk from the school to the projects, all through downtown, all over town in an orange jumpsuit like you in jail. You used to have to wear that. 
metal detectors and everything at this alternative school. We have to wear an orange fucking jumpsuit. And you couldn't be on any campus of any school. But anyway, uh, so that was humiliating walking every day. Because some people, most people would catch a ride. Nobody really wanted to walk in an orange jumpsuit. But I used to have to walk every day in an orange jumpsuit at 13 years old type shit. So I'm 15 years old. I'm in a juvenile. I'm trying not to go to TYC. Uh, and one day he say, uh, matter of fact, I talked to my pops. He said, I talked to granddaddy. I talked to your granddaddy. Uh, he gonna bring in, man. I'm happy, and also, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. I'm so glad I thought about this. This was the first time I picked up the Bible. Mm. My relationship with God became so close in juvenile, and I always sung, like I said. So I had visions. I had visions of me being a great man. It was the first time. Um, I started. I started trying to figure out who I was. I started reading the Bible. I started. And the story of Joseph, that's what touched me more than any story in the Bible. Uh, when mm -hmm. his brothers and sisters sold him into slavery. And he was wondering why he was going through what he was going through. Uh, yeah, I studied Joseph. They held me many a nights. And I started studying the Bible. And uh, I started visioning myself being a preacher. Mm -hmm. And my pops was a preacher. My granddaddy was a preacher. My great granddaddy was a preacher. So when my granddaddy picked me up from juvenile, I'm already, I'm, I'm quoting bro Bible scriptures and stuff, and I'm telling them how I want to be a preacher, and I'm going to be a preacher, and this and that, because I seen a change in myself, bro. I seen a light. It was a light in me, bro. I just I just felt like I was walking in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? And not in the flesh. Yeah. So, oh, bro. I, I mean, I'm singing at every church he's taking me to, but also I got I still got some of that thuggish, rugged bone in me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm walking with my head down and my hands behind my back like I still got on handcuffs and shit. Because in juvenile, you got to walk with your hands behind your back and your head now. So my granddaddy trying to get me out of that habit. Uh, so I'm going to fast forward. I'm not going to stay into this long. But 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 that, that was a key part. Also, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to change, but I, I'm still a blood. Yeah. So I, I get to the cliff. He stay on uh, Ledbetter and the pink oasis right next to the gray ones. Uh, down the street from Golden Star and shit like that. So I went to Maceo my first year. Now Maceo was full of food, so you had them BMF dudes. What's it called? BMF? I mean, not BMF. Oh, yeah. Best Select. And, and Best some kind of blood for life. You know what I'm talking about? BFF. And, 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 and then you had, uh, what's them motherfuckers right up? Uh, you had Holland Hills. Holland Hills. Hills. Mm -hmm. Holland Hills was Crips. Yeah, them motherfuckers, they're uh, some dangerous motherfuckers. But anyway, I went to Maceo Smith. Which was cool. I was still trying to be a blood, but I was going to church too. But I started feeling guilty about banging. So, um, keep in mind while I'm singing at these churches, and I'm slowly changing. I'm slowly changing, and Dallas changed me in many ways because that was when I first wanted to go to college. I started having these thoughts of just wanting to be successful, bro. Just wanting to be a great man. Like, I had never thought that shit when I was in Marshall, but I started seeing successful people. I got jobs while I was, I, so I worked for the first time when I was in Dallas. So, um, I'm, um, I was going to say where I worked. I worked, I worked a couple jobs, but anyway, uh, so I was working and, uh, but the thing about my granddaddy and he, he passed a couple years, rest in peace to him, but he was a great man, but my, my granddaddy had ignorant ways. For one, he let me know off the rip that my whole family called him and told him not to take me in, that I was bad, I was rebellious. And, you know, looking back on that, maybe that was why he treated me like, maybe if they hadn't called him and said I was so bad, because he treated me like I was a criminal. He watched my every move. He told his wife to watch my every move. Um, he would accuse me of shit. He just, he just would treat me like a criminal. I, like he would judge me and we'd be talking and uh, laughing and stuff. And I would go to my room and I never, I, I never forget how when I would go in my room, I would hear him talking about me like that motherfucker ain't shit. Remember, remember, remember his own mama said he wasn't shit. And they say the boy retarded. I, I'm, I'm going to get his medical. Cause my mama tried to put me in a mental home when I was 13. Cause I said, I don't want to live no more. But it wasn't that I wanted to kill myself. I never wanted to kill myself, but I didn't want to live no more because I was so depressed. I just didn't want to. Fuck it. I don't care about living. I just want to die, but I don't want to kill myself. But she put me in the mental home for two weeks. So they used all this against me. And the mental home didn't change me. Nothing. The mental folks said he just highly depressed. He don't want to kill himself. 
he's just highly depressed. His parents separated. He's in the streets. He feel alone. So fast forward, he held that against me and treated me like I was mental and treated me like I was a criminal. I like I was a mental criminal. And he wouldn't accept my change. He wouldn't accept the light. He never talked about the change in me. He constantly treated me like any day I go back to being a criminal. So he would be super strict towards me. And like I said, he would talk about me. And so my mama would uh, send me money and he would take it all. He would take all of it and give me $20. And so shit like that. So when I started working, he tried to take that check. And uh, by this time, he had asked my mama for more money and she was sending him more money. And because uh, he was complaining and like he would complain about me a lot. And uh, like I said, I would stay out the way, but he would down me a lot and just kind of like you ain't going to be shit. And you just a thug. and You just a thug. And that's all you're going to be and shit like that. He would down me a lot. And it was like a lot of psychological shit. So it got to the point when I got that job and I'm 16 now and I'm at Roosevelt. Oh. Uh, he told me, uh, yeah, give me your check and you just get $20 out of it. But you're already getting this mom money from my mom because I couldn't stay with him if my mom didn't send that money every month, too. That's another thing. I found that he was about money. Mm. It was sad. I love my granddad. He was about money, though. It wasn't about love, bro. I appreciate him giving me a chance because Dallas taught me a lot. Dallas where I learned how to get some money, too. The hardest mm. hustle I've ever seen in life. Them some hard motherfuckers. Them some hustling motherfuckers. But anyway, uh, he just wouldn't let me change and be great. It's like black folks, we do that as family members. When you become a troubled of the family, because nobody in my family had been to prison but me. Nobody went to do juvenile, none of that shit but me. Everybody in my family, none of them was criminal. So you being one of the only ones, it's like everybody look at you like, man, he just, instead of what he's struggling with. So anyway, my granddaddy treated me like a, a criminal. So when he tried to take my money from my check, I said, no. Nah. So I ran away. And uh, I was running around Dallas for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, with my little check money and shit. So finally, oh, also, I'm on strict probation until I'm 18. I got a report every week. Intensive supervision probation. And also, Marshall said that I was not to return to Marshall, Texas until I was 18 years old, which is weird. Like, I didn't kill somebody. But they said mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to return. I couldn't. I, I used to have to sneak, go down there and see uh, to friends and shit to see my family. So. I talked to my pops. He said, you come stay with me. I'm telling him how my granddaddy doing. He mm -hmm. said, but we got to see how you can come to Marshall. So my pops knew, knew some rich white folks. <laughs> they knew some other rich white folks. They knew some lawyers. And they got it to where, yeah, you still going to be on probation until you're 18. But um, you, uh, you can come back to Marshall. So I was able to come back to Marshall. That was the worst thing, though. When I came back to Marshall, I got right back in the streets and uh, mm -hmm. right back on this blood shit. All the bloods. I know it's everybody. Charles. Oh, boy. I, I just I feel like a superstar in my own town. So I'm back on some gang, gang, gang shit. Um, I had a partner. I talk about him all the time. Uh, I end up staying with him. Cause I got kicked out the apartments with my uh, pops. Then I end up selling a little weed and hustling and shit. Uh, so I'm staying with my partner. And his mama was very little weary of me because I was doing a lot of other shit, too. And I had him doing some shit, and we was doing some shit. And we had a little crew, and we had a studio, and we doing music and all that. Stuff. That's the place to hang, smoke your weed, do all that, freestyle on beats, all that kind of shit. So we go to uh, Hidden Licks and shit like that. So word then got out. Somebody from, somebody from the crew then told it and this and that. So a uh, little robbers and shit. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the run. So we end up hitting a couple more licks and they pull us over one day. And uh we all go in, me, him, and a uh, dude named JD who later on testified on him. Uh, I always told my partner, because he was a year younger than me, I always told him, I said, say, bro, if anything ever happened, bro, I'll take the fall. And that uh I ain't gonna never let nothing happen to you in these streets. He was like my I felt like he was my little brother. And I, I used to tell his mama that I ain't nothing finna happen to him. That's my dog and this and that. So uh, and one of the charges, his phone was uh, his phone was used. Somebody used his fucking phone, and it was traced to his phone. They was trying to get me to tell on him, and this and that, and this and that, and sum it all up. I end up, I end up taking the rap for the shit. So, as I'm leaving out the interrogation room, and I said he ain't got nothing to do with it. Neither one of them had nothing to do with 
uh, I thought it was the realest shit a man could do. I thought I thought that was keeping it real is. I thought uh, that's what you're supposed to do for your homie. You're supposed to be willing to take a bullet for him. You're supposed to be willing to take a case for him. Uh, yeah, like Biggie homie did for him. I thought I was doing the realest shit ever. Uh, so as I was leaving out the interrogation room, I told my homie, I said, I love you, bro. You're good. So I go to the county. He get released. Uh, some shit go down. His his mama at first I could call, but then she stopped accepting my calls. Uh, the homies, uh, I'm calling them. They stop accepting my calls. Ain't nobody. I'm not hearing from nobody. So I'm hearing certain shit from people that's coming in the county. Like, bro, you know I'm saying motherfucker really talking about you, bro. And this and that, this and that. So I'm starting to feel salty and played. So. I get my time and I'll never forget I called Courtney and I told him when I signed for eight years. He said, Eight years? Damn, bro. I said, Yeah. Anyway, so everybody telling me, like, bro, you shouldn't have took that shit, bro. Them dude, them motherfuckers ain't your homies and shit like that. So I'm down a year after I'm in the pen. He kept he kept the capital murder. Capital murder. They tried to uh, rob rob some motherfuckers and uh end up killing a white man. He got found guilty, put on death row. So my first two years, three years in the pen was strictly game banging. Was strictly trying to make a name for myself. Was strictly trying to earn street credit, prison credit, uh, be a, a young G into an OG, getting straight stripes. That's all I was focused on my first three years was being down for the blood. Uh, went through a lot of shit with them motherfuckers. Uh, but anyway, uh, my fourth year, I uh, go to this little church event type thing. And uh, at this point, bro, I've been through so much shit with the Bloods. I've been turned on by many, uh, seen a lot of soft shit. Uh, I've seen the favoritism uh, when, when you went, when, when uh, I seen that we ain't organized. I seen that it's some fake shit. I'm peeping all this. And I, and I hang with number. At this time, I'm hanging with number older cats. So they have a church event. And uh, at this point, bro, I started thinking about my future. And I'm thinking about my little brother who's 13 at the time. I'm 22 at the time. And I was just like, bro, I can't do it no more. And initially, i done it for religious reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. That I want to follow God. And, you know, I, I want to uh, be a Christian and follow God. And I thought I'd even be a preacher one day. But mm -hmm. the way I done it was gangster though. I went to the head speaker of the bloods, called him under the stairs. Uh, no, he got hands. No, he colder than me. Uh, knockout artist, squeak out of South Dallas, Bonton to be exact. Uh, squeak mm -hmm. with the goddamn gold. That motherfucker be smiling like a motherfucker. Black as shit with the shag. Anyway, uh, squeak crazy. I'm a get money motherfucker though. That motherfucker, the coldest I ever seen with some dice. But anyway, he wanted to hear blood. So I called him. I let him know. I said, but say, bro, I'm done, bro. And I'm thinking we finna fight after this because that's all I've ever heard is, and I've seen it actually. Dudes will look at you after that shit. Squeak looked at me and started smiling. He said, "You finally becoming a man," and gave me a hug, bro. And he said, "I respect and I'm gonna tell all the other dogs." So when I let it go, bro, that was one of the hardest decisions because that was on that was like the family to me. That was my family. Hmm. But, and also, when you stop being a blood, bro, uh, especially in prison, it get more dangerous for you. You can get smashed on by anybody. Uh, motherfucker, and a lot of bloods will be salty towards you. Uh, so it's just a lot of more animosity, a lot of more tension when you're not banging. Solos go through the toughest ride in prison. Uh, a lot of gang bangers get saved because they hiding behind some shit. Uh, most of them motherfuckers scary. Anyway, uh, so I let go of blood. Uh, oh, Right after that, I got my GED. I went to culinary arts school. No, not culinary arts. I went to horticulture. So I started getting my education, getting some college credit. Uh, I'm on my religious shit, but also I'm studying knowledge. Uh, mm -hmm. I read the autobiography of Michael Messis told to Alice Haley. I read about Huey P. Newton. I started studying Marcus Garvey. I started studying my history and studying these different dudes. But the Malcolm X book, that touched me the most. And it, it sparked some inside of me. Because I had never been told these things. I never knew this about white folks. I thought white folks was the nicest people ever. 
that's what we think in East Texas. We <laughs> white folks are just because on Halloween we go to the rich neighborhoods and they got the best candy and they be smiling and shit. And you just think white folks are nice. The white man is the Santa Claus that we take pictures with at the mall every year. So we we grow up to the white folks. <laughs> The nicest white folks ever. So as I'm learning our history and I'm learning trickery and I'm learning what we went through and the people that fought, for, it sparked something in me, bro. Just like it sparked in my, it sparked in me, bro. And I just st kept studying and studying. And the more I'm studying, the more I'm realizing, hold on, religion don't go with revolution. Huh. <laughs> See, the preacher don't tell you that. And, 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 and the Muslims, no religion will tell you that. Religion and re and revolution, you can't put that together. Now you can't put that together because when it comes to revolution, this is just about freedom. It ain't got to be no certain. That's black folks' biggest problem. We think it's supposed to be a certain belief system. Uh, yeah, some certain shit we gotta believe. I we just want to be free. Let's just be black and let's just fight for freedom because we'll get the arguing over who got the better idea. That's that's black folks' biggest problem. <laughs> it's it egos and shit and who got the better plan or the better strategy you know anyway um so i'm studying i'm studying and i just bro it gets so deep to where i'm getting together with other brothers and that, that's on some knowledge and that's on some black folk shit i get together with a, a black panther brother named sight named sight one of the most solid brothers i ever met in, sight straight up out of south dallas south dallas i just don't know what south dallas west dallas I met some bad boys out the clip, but the baddest when I'm talking about OGs, South Dallas, West Dallas, bro. Mm. South Dallas, West Dallas, bro. Them dudes out of South Dallas is different. And so Psych out of South Dallas, he 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 was one of them dudes that used to be a gangster. Motherfucker was scared of him terror. Now he was a black panther and a revolutionary. So he was giving me books every day. And then he worked out. He he got a team of young kids. And he in his 40s, but still feared a knockout or air, you know what I'm saying? A beast, a damn fool. But he's on some betterment shit. So I'm learning a lot from him. I'm learning how to be a man for the first time. See, my pops wasn't no man. Uh, hmm. I'm just going to be His father wasn't in, His father left him. My granddaddy that took me in is the same man that left uh, my grandma with 10 kids by herself and moved to Dallas and got with another woman who didn't have no kids. Yeah, my granddaddy, uh, he was a coward for that, and he left my pops. So my pops never really learned how to be a man. Not not at the time he raised me. Maybe later on in his preaching years, but raising me, he wasn't a man. He was a great football coach. I had to learn how to be a man from other men, like psych. Mm -hmm. See, because my, my definition of a man is different. It's more than a motherfucker that got a job and paying bills and that uh, take care of his kids, bro. Uh, you What's ought to stand for what's right. You ought to okay. stand for what's right if you're a man. You ought to be able to stand on what's right even when all your homies think is wrong. That's what I do as a content creator. I stand on shit even when everybody's saying something wrong, bro. I stand on it. I stand on it. And as a man, bro, you should want respect. And black men are not respected in this country. So you should want to fight for freedom. You should want to fight. You, uh, one of the greatest things about men is taking accountability. It's people that died for me, bro. It's people that died so I'd have more rights than what I have. And we got more rights. We just shitting on it. We ain't doing nothing with the tools that they helped us get. Hmm. So part of being a man is taking up on the struggle. That's our problem. We don't want to fight for shit, bro. And we just fight for our kids. Why don't you care about your kids, uh, homeboys? His kids, homeboys, that eating cereal and water every day. Why don't you care about his kids, but about your kids, homeboys, and the kids around your community? <laughs> so it's just a lot more with being a man, bro. A man is one of the most unselfish uh, people. A man is a leader, bro. You're a leader of your community, and that's why I'm, I got I got I got a grudge so much against the church because the church is supposed to the the the, the pastor supposed to be the leader of the community. <laughs> that's what they used to be. Martin Luther King was a preacher. They fought. They fought, bro. Now they just take money. And why mm. I, I can't attend church. And yeah, it may be a couple good churches, but most of them are corrupt. Most of them corrupt. They scream, we are the world. Uh, but why the white church and the black church has never uh, united and never will. And mm. never will. And the and the white church is 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 a hundred million times more richer. Because most black churches are poor. It's some rich churches, but most black churches are poor. 
So it, it's a money difference. It's a race difference. So that, how can we believe in the same God and we can't fellowship together? So this religion thing. Um, but oh, 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 so, 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 so as I'm studying and I'm learning these things, I'm learning like, oh, religion. You can't mix re revolution with religion. So when I get out, I still try to hold on to Jesus and hold on to uh, the church. I try to get back in the church. I'm going to my pop church and shit like that. But I'm also getting back in the streets when I got out and certain shit. But it's just the more watching my pops in church and watching preachers and watching the game. Cause my pops, he was cold. My pops, yeah, my pops played the game. You know, he had some picking in him, uh, but he loved the Lord. <laughs> but all preachers, they do dirty shit, bro. They fuck. They they do what they do, bro. You like a rapper when you a preacher. You got all these women mm. throwing. You a rapper. <laughs> you a superstar when you a preacher. These women are throwing it at you. It's that ninety percent women in the church, bro. You think ain't no fucking finna happen, bro? It's a lot of pressure on these preachers, though. But they take full advantage of it. <laughs> How the fuck I'm a leader and 90% of the motherfuckers I'm talking to is women. That's why I've never cared about having women on my channel. I appreciate the women that do support me. I want to talk to men. I want to <laughs> build together with men. Bro, I don't give a fuck about women admiring what the fuck I say. <laughs> women need to talk to women. That's why you had Coretta Scott King. That's why you had Betty X. That was their job to tend to the women. It really ain't for a man to be teaching a bunch of women. You're supposed to be teaching men. But it's ninety percent women in the church, and the preacher getting all the money, bro. But anyway, uh, so once I saw the religion thing was some bullshit, I said, "Oh no!" So it just, and and I got out trying to be a rapper. So that's another thing. <laughs> I got out trying to be a rapper. Uh, you know, I got a lot of music and shit, and thinking that I was just gonna honestly blow up as a rapper. So as I'm dropping music, I'm getting views, I'm 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 shining. Facebook, people in my hometown talking about me, but I seen how dirty the industry was. I peeped out. Even in my hometown, bro, motherfuckers didn't want me recording at their studio. They didn't want to do no features. Motherfuckers didn't want to mix your shit right. Motherfuckers was hating real hard. All that kind of shit. So it was so hard recording. Uh, I peeped how dirty the game is. I peeped how it ain't about your talent. I just peeped a lot of shit about the industry. And when I seen how these rappers are, and I seen the gayness of them, and I seen the fakeness of them, and I even seen the rappers from my generation, how all of them promote the violence in our community, bro. Eventually, I just had to say, I don't want to be some cool shit no more. Because I used to hmm. be somewhat ashamed to speak again. Because I know black folks that look at you like you weird. Oh, you yeah. this little dirt. Ah, oh, you want some pro black man? I don't want nobody want to hear that old pro black. Ah, oh, you think you fair come? Ah, oh, you think you Malcolm X or some shit? Nobody want to hear that old shit. And but it's in my heart, bro. And I stopped being ashamed. And like I said, I lost my sister four months before I started this channel. After that, I just stopped giving a fuck, I guess. And I found mm -hmm. the courage to speak out. I used to be ashamed of it, bro, because I, I most most black folks don't want to hear no revolutionary talk. They don't want to hear no black power shit. They don't want, bro. We want to talk about some shiny shit. Tell me about some money and some bitches. If you hmm. ain't talking about that, bro, dudes don't want to hear what you talking about, bro. Give a fuck about what our ancestors done. We don't Damn. value that shit. So I had to stop being ashamed, bro. I don't give a fuck. And I've lost followers. Oh, people think I'm racist. People think I hate white. Bro, how the fuck you hate white folks? How I hate you? You mistreating me. You own me. How you gonna accuse the property of the owner of hating the owner? We property, bro. Shit, give a fuck how many trips you take to uh, Dominica. <laughs> you take your ass to Mexico on all these cruises and shit. You gotta take your ass back to back to America. Hmm. We property, So let me bro. ask you this. Let me ask you this. So how you feel about your hometown now? Because I, I feel uh, like I'm kind of going through the same thing. Oh, oh, I never moved shit. back. I never moved back. Uh, I don't live out there. I'm still in East Texas, but I'm not in Marshall. Uh, hell no. Nah. I never, because I got in too much trouble there. All my family there. Uh, a lot of shit, bro. I'm a, I'm like the black sheep of my family. I'm the, I'm one of the only ones that kind of don't show up at every cookout. <laughs> well, I'd be the one if I'm at the cookout. I'm somewhere smoking weed the whole. I'm gone the whole time. Bro, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm burning off. I'm over there smoking, uh, cause most 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 of my family don't smoke. So I'm smoking and I'm off to myself. I'm a black sheep of the family. So I never moved back to Marshall. And they love mm -hmm. white folks. And really I gotta get out of East Texas. They uh East Texas blacks, they just love white folks too much. 
Oh, uh, they smoking these methamphetamines with these motherfuckers in the woods and shit, <laughs> scratching and itching and tweaking and doing weird shit. Uh, yeah, black folks love white folks in East Texas. He's Maybe crazy. it's Longview. Yeah, Longview, them some gangster. Longview is like Dallas. That's some them some gangster motherfuckers. But uh, uh Marsha, yeah, I mean, we black, we we got some shit, but black folks, I don't know, East Texas, East Texas is white, white ran, and Mexicans taking over so. Uh, really, Texas period, bro. I'm gonna say Texas period, but I still like this. I I like the city somewhat better because it's, it's more opportunity. So I've been thinking about going to the city. I'm gonna ask you this. Cause, I'm gonna ask you this because I've been dealing with this kind of. Uh, how, do you still think about like banging? Because like for me, oh it's bro, like, oh it, bro, it's too big of my identity, listen, and it's like I left listen, it. Bro. The like first year, the first, the first six months, bro. It's times I was just being myself, just feeling. I felt lonely. Hmm. I felt lonely, bro. I felt like because I felt a part of something before that. Even yeah. though most of them hit, I felt a, I felt alone, alone, alone. And when I seen how a lot of blood, some some blood still would hug me because they had respect for me. A lot of bloods I seen their true color. Oh, you never like me anyway. Now y'all kind of hmm. mugging me. I'm mugging y'all when we pass each other. I felt outcast, bro. It's like you alone, bro. I felt alone. And I started kind of regret, like, damn, bro, you left something. You've been with this 10 years, bro. What are you doing, bro? Why would you? Are you a traitor? Nah. Like I said, I left it for Jesus, but I ended up putting the Bible down, and I picked up black power. I picked up my goddamn fist. and So I went from a blood to a Christian to a, a, a black revolutionary. <laughs> Yo, yeah, that's what that's been my transition. But I always speak of the church because that's what I come up under. And mm -hmm. the church used to be a great place. Even though we were misguided and that white boy was still hung up in the church. Well, many black churches back in the game used to have a black Jesus. But the point is, even though the doctrine is messed up and white folks gave it to us, the church still used to feed people. The church used to meet together to figure out how we were going to beat the white boy. The church was the meeting place. The Black Panthers met at the church. So a lot of people don't know that. The church now, you can't, you better not meet at the church and talk about some black issues in the community. They'll say, let the, let the mayor, let the, let the people of the community handle it. Let the police handle that. So See, that's I, why I lost, I lost a lot of respect. But, but, but I don't want to leave your topic. Uh, bro, not being a blood, it's still times I think about it. I think about it and I feel like I sometimes I think I'm gonna tell you what I think sometimes. Could I have been a blood? Could because I'm already a blood, so blood's gonna fuck with me. Could I have been the blood to do what Tookie Wheels was trying to do to the Crips before they killed them? Could I have been could I have been the blood that have helped young kids that was trying to be bloods or finna be a blood? Could I have inspired? Could it have gave me a bigger impact if I had remained the blood, but just tried to be it in a positive way? But it leads me to the conclusion of no, bro. No, that's not trying to be a positive dope thing. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. still smoke crack. I'm just gonna teach y'all the crackheads uh, about uh, black power in the midst of smoking crack with them. Nah, bro, I'm not gonna ride on and, and harm other black men and, and ride on Crips and kill other Crips and preach black power. Can't do it, bro. You got to choose one or the other. So I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Blood stand, blood stand for self hate at this point. It ain't brothers leading other out of out of darkness. It ain't black liberated order of death. It ain't none of that shit no more. Uh, it is it is some self hating ass. Coward ass black folks that only target black folks. That's what blood and is. That's what GDs is. That's what people nation, folk nation is. That's what all that shit is. Anything got to do with gang banging is the most cowardly shit that has ever existed in the black community. That's what it's become. So there's no way I can be a blood or a crip and join that shit and be a part of it and try to lead them out of it. No, I can't. I can't be a part of it. I gotta speak against it if you love your people, even when it ain't cool. Cause there's some blood that don't want to harm other black men, but you still a blood. Mm -hmm. You still a blood. Oh, I'm a blood, but I I help kids and I feed the community. I throw out turkeys on Thanksgiving. You still a blood, bro. And ain't no blood in America accepted by. Yeah, and it ain't no gang that they're not respected, bro. The white boy ain't never respected a blood or a crib. They ain't never got the white boy respect. They ain't never made the government scared of them. They ain't considered terrorists. They only terrorists to the black community. 
So I never respect them, and I don't want to join it, and I don't want to be a part of it. And I don't regret my decision. It was hard. I had a lot of love for it, bro. I was dead. I was the blood that, bro. I was hard. I was getting in so many fights just to. I was I was a volunteer blood. Yeah, I was one of the motherfuckers that volunteered to put in work. Mm. I wanted to be so down. Yeah, I was dedicated. I was very low. Very, very, very low. But nah, bro, I, I had to learn the hard way, bro. I had to learn the hard way. And I don't look down on people who bang. And I I, 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 I got to start mentioning that in my country because I don't, because it be young homies that they may be a blood or a crib. And, and they just confused and young at the time. I don't want to shit on it to where you feel like. Because a young kid that's like 22 here think, oh, man. Damn, bro, why you got to shit on us like that? I ain't harming nobody. I'm. It just because some people you look at it just a swag. Oh, uh, my hood is bloods. I don't harm nobody. I'm. I, I rock red. This is my hood color. You get what I'm saying? So, but it's still fucked up. Yeah. This how I feel when I started when I first found your content because I feel like uh you in a unique lane. Because I'm kind of going through some similar things. Because uh, I kind of dropped my flag, left the hood. I feel oh. bad, though, because it's like I've been doing... I, I was I was over there my whole life. You're a man. Oh. You're a man. Hey, 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 hey. I want you to finish. I, and I hate I hate stopping. I, because I don't... But I, I just want to say it before I forget. When you stop banging, uh, was it a situation where uh, was it some six nine shit? Was it a situation where you was locked up and your homies and you end up uh saying no, nah, bro, I don't want to be a, I don't want to bang no more and told it on your homies and moved out because some dudes yeah, do it like that. you know. So I'm saying that's the only way I would look at it as something wrong. It, other than that, you elevating as a man. You didn't tell it on nobody. You didn't do some shameful shit. You ain't get uh, pushed out the hood by somebody and did some whole shit and turned on your homies. Now nah, you just became a man and grew up. But yeah, do you think? Nah, you finish. With, 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 with my with my situation was I started because I never I never been to jail and I just start. Like, oh boy, I admire you. Oh, boy, see, I'm gonna fuck, fuck with you. I, I was already gonna fuck with you, but boy, I love fucking with a brother that never been to jail. <laughs> but it kind it, it kind of used to make me feel bad. Nine hundred three. I'm, I'm I'm gonna tell you why. Because <laughs> you you know, growing up in the hood, like up is down and down is up. Like I used yep. to always, you know what I'm saying, be with my partners, be a part of the things. But for some reason, I you would have wanted to be with power. Ever. Hey, I, I had a homie like that. Bro, I got a homie that done hit just as many licks as me, but he's never been to jail, bro. Never got caught. He just would always slip out. And listen, bro, I, I know that feeling, bro. When I went to prison. I was really excited because mm -hmm. I knew I would be able to come back to the hood and say I've been. You feel left out when you don't go to prison. Yeah. You feel left out. When you see brothers come home from prison and you see them prison parties, that shit make you feel like you missed out on some shit. When you hear them prison stories and prison walls, because they all got some tough shit to say. You just feel like you ain't a gangster if you don't go through it. It felt like I, I, was, I never got to validate go to myself. Yeah. I'm not a gangster until I go to prison. Yeah, yeah that's what we think. But, uh, that would be, but they tell it in prison too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fucking with them boys. And when and when I be hearing your content, because I just kind of you know, uh, I left in good standing. Like I was, you know, what I'm saying I was, I was one of the, the main guys. But I used to just feel bad because I I was like, it, it was one day it just hit me. I was in the spot. It almost, you know, what I'm saying got hit. I put the <laughs> lights off. I'm under the I'm under the sink, and I'm just like I ain't got no record. I used to get jobs because my granny I was raised my granny she used to be on my ass and shit. So I used to get a job just to say I had one. I would quit all the time, mm -hmm. but I had a, I had got a good job. And the first thing my dumb ass did was uh, link up with one of my partners, get an apartment, whatever, whatever. So I'm working a job. I'm getting like twenty two dollars an hour, like at at a, a younger age. So I. I I got that, but then I'm like, bro, this kind of lame. So I'm up here. I'm like, man, I need to. It's like I wash my. I wanted to wash my money in reverse, if that makes sense. Like, oh, okay, like okay. This, ain't, this ain't no street money, so I, I'm not even looking at the money like it's cool. So, yeah, because it ain't street. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? I get a spot with my partner, and then it almost get hit, and then just a part. It just in my brain just clicked. It's like, what the fuck is you doing? 
you ain't never been in no real major trouble. You know, escaped oh, all these situations or whatever. Oh, you lucky, bro, that's something to brag about. Now, people talk about bragging about prison, bro. You, you should, you, bro. You should talk about that more. You mm. wanted them to made it out, bro. You were smart. You lucky too, though, but smart. I, I, I feel bad about it though. It's and, like, and in Dallas, bro, Dallas one of the stiffest cities in America. And, and people yeah. don't know that. A lot of people don't know that about Dallas. Dallas is one of the most cutthroat. I've never seen people hustle. I've lived in Houston too. And Houston, it, it, it's 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 fucked up. But I've never seen people be the cons. I've never you ain't never seen as many cons as Dallas. <laughs> and them up. Bro, motherfucker will cut the shit out you. Them dope things out there be different. Them motherfuckers will talk you out of anything. I mean, it just how Dallas is a fast city. Mm-hmm. It's dangerous too. So to make it out without going to jail, what, and laws plant dope on you in Dallas. You know how many motherfuckers I know that the laws planted dope on them? Shit. Yeah. Man, to make it out there without going to jail. Oh, bro. But and it's a part of me that still want to kind of get rich for the set, go back and do something. Because like, like how it, it like how you said, kids don't really be bad. It just everybody from my, nobody from my neighborhood had their daddy, man. Nobody in my crew, not one of us. I'm talking about like wow. 14, it's like 14 of us. Like wow. Nobody had we didn't have our daddy. And uh, wow. you no, know, we come how from do you? Uh, I'm 28. I just turned 28 now. What oh boy, I'm proud of you, bro. You changed before you hit 30, bro. Oh, man. Proud of you, bro. Especially all the killing in Dallas, bro. Boy, you can lose your life like that in Dallas. Oh. Keep going, though, bro. Do you think? But, but uh, you you related. I, I related to your message so much because it's like um, we lost the youngest out of our six, you know, uh, the two youngest. Both of them. Two oh, God, the youngest. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, uh, you know, I, we was rapping. We were doing all that. We, you know, we had our neighborhood in our chokehold. Uh, but then I was just like, man, like this, like my granny with his granny and all that. Then they die, and I'm just like, I kind of feel like Muffo was. I didn't know Muffo was watching us like that, like the younger generation, the kids coming up. I'm just thinking yeah. like the people we watch coming up, like they ain't really got too much going on. We got to get something. We got to do something. And then I just, I, it just clicked with me that one day. But it's like I think about these niggas all the time. I think about the hood all the time. I can't get it out of my head. I oh, feel like uh, no, ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. Ain't nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that, I, bro. When I whenever I go to Marshall, bro, it's it's mandatory. I ride through my hood. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. I pass by his corner, and I'm revolutionary minded. But I still, bro, it, I, this despite I had my first fight. That's why I knocked out such and such it. That, that's why, man. I was, man, them Chris was chasing me over here. Man, that's what the laws chase me. Oh man, that's what that's what my that's why my partner got killed. That's why my cousin got killed. Oh yeah, bro. I pass by certain places every time I go through Marshall. I always go through my hood. I love it. I I love it, bro. I love. It. I always got to go to some corner store in the west side of Marshall. Mandatory. I'm gonna go to some corner store. You know. So I understand it. It's just a love for the people that you came up around. It's familiarity. It's it's what you're familiar with, bro. It's what you know. But you can't get so caught up in going back, bro, and wanting to be seen and letting know like I ain't changed on that shit. That that shit, bro. That's how. When you out of that, bro, you got to get out of that. You come mm-hmm. over here, wild man, bro. Every now and then, I ain't saying never go back, but. It's, it's dangerous, bro. It's hard to discipline yourself because when you go back, you're going to want to keep going back. I'm, I'm going to right, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, you know like, what I'm saying? It's, but you, but you, it's like on one hand, you don't want to completely cut your homies off and, and ghost them and call, you feel like a fuckboy or something. But on the other hand, bro, shit, man, I'm trying to change my life, bro. Can you respect that? If you love me, bro, if you really my homie, bro, you a friend, cause I, I, I don't I don't like the word homie. I value friendship. I don't like a couple motherfuckers to smoke weed with and shit and, and do that. And, and just I I believe in friendship these days. And I that's what I look for. And if the, any of them dudes are really your friend, they'll be proud of you for uh, elevating your life and it would inspire them. You know what I'm saying? Because friendship go past that gang, gang, gang shit. If I see you better in yourself as a man, bro, naturally, even if I'm a gang banger and I, I'm a naturally like, that's positive. 
he elevating. So I, even if I, I ain't ready for that yet and I still want to buy it, I'm going to respect it. I got to respect it and hope that I get there one day. You know, nice. bro, that banging shit, it, it just everything that come with it, bro. It's just a contradiction, bro. And once I realized that, I'm like, I'm living a fake lifestyle. Yeah, my mm -hmm. homies, I love my homies. I love my homies. Yeah, I love my homies. I love my dogs, but this shit is fake, bro. I'm going to take this too, 903. Bro, we ain't riding on the Mexicans enough. Bloods don't, Bloods and Crips do not ride on the Mexican gangs like that. Or we ride on them when they ride on us, but we look for each other. Or we come looking for the smoke. Mexican, Blacks and Bloods and Crips do not ride on Mexican gangs. <laughs> you know, so we just attack each other, bro. It just it ain't it is it's no way around that shit. But I understand, like you said, with your homies and your crew. Yeah, man, that's a hell of a story. Oh, let me tell you this, bro. Mm. I'm in my feelings every day, bro. I, well, well, let me say it like this. Let me say it like this. Some things you never get over. I'm over it, but it still angers me. You know how some shit just still anger you. Mm. I think about it, I get mad, but. I'm over it. I don't want to do nothing to you, nothing like that, or like it ain't no fuck you forever. Like I talk to you motherfuckers today if one of you motherfuckers hit me up. Fair. I the whole, I, bro, it was like twenty of us, maybe twenty to thirty of us. We was a crew for real. Rolled to went to parties, crewed up, four five car, that type of shit. Yeah, we was a crew. Everybody and we we've had fights with other sides of Marsh and shit like that. I done started in a few fights, so like. It was like me and my homie, the one that's on death row. It was like we was like we was like neck and neck, bro. We was that was my bro. So and it was his spot. But anyway, so after I took the charge, I'm in prison. When I get out, none of my homies that used to be at that house ever hit me up. None have ever to this day. I've been out 10 years. None ever hit me up. And I saw a few of them and they kind of acted nonchalant. None of them was like, say, bro, you solid, bro. Or you no, know, two of them, maybe two of them. But most did not fuck with me. Did not fuck with me. Never reached out to me. I treated me like I was a snitch or something. Because mm -hmm. JD was a homie that was in the crew that ended up testifying. And he he was one of the ones that was supposed to be one of the most solid. I looked out for him. Fucked with him heavy. He testified. But uh, at, at my partner trial on his, uh, and uh, when he was on death row for the murder, as a character witness to talk about our gang and how, who was the leader. He named me and uh, Courtney as the leader and said we was the main ones and shit like that. Yeah, he testified and moved to Dallas somewhere and we ain't heard from him since. But all the other homies, I have never heard from them. Never heard of them. Never. They ghost me. Some of them I was real close to. Ghosted me. To this day, have never hit me up and said, "Hey, bro, good to see you out." None of them, only but by two, ghosted me, ghosted me, and I never understand that. I say them motherfuckers treated me like I would, like, cause you know when you get out, everybody hit you up. Hmm. Post it, man, nothing, nothing. Still ain't heard from them. So I just, I just thought I'd throw that shit in there. Yeah, that's crazy. I've been man. throwing it out there in my video. So see, that's how you get yeah. out of pain and that's how you vent. Yeah, I, 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 that's why I love to get out of boxing sometimes. I just like to express myself, bro. Even when I'm I talking about you. boxing, I throw in some shit. I told you you remind me of uh a DJ academics. <laughs> like like that type of like I, I get drawn into what you're saying, and it goes beyond just the like how DJ Academics was hip hop. But then he would, yeah. just, he would just draw you out. But you know, he was kind of lame. He never did nothing in life. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. like it'd be different when it comes from somebody like you because oh, yeah, a lot we of relate, people, like bro. you said, yeah, a lot of people say that shit lame. I'm just talking to you, bro. I completely relate to you, bro. I relate yeah. to you, everything you. And I've lived in Dallas. I know what you're talking about. I know what you talk, especially in that stiff cliff. Oh, boy. And it's dangerous over there. You know, I'm going to tell you, you know, Ramona, well, I, I know you know, but Ramona yeah. and all that back there behind Glendale Park. Yeah. <laughs> on the other side. Not on the side where uh, you're going towards singing, but uh, on the other side by Ann Arbor and our boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good motherfucker. And, yeah. I, and like, I lived over there by BFL and shit. Yeah, that, that cliff, yeah. motherfucker. I'm from Singing Hills, dude. A uh, whole from Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up there by Sockmore Sailors. 
mm-hmm. shit, all that. And then you got Keys and Polk. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, so big too. Cliff, the, Oak Cliff is really a city. Man, Oak Sock Cliff, was like jail nine hundred three. It's like everybody you go to you go to lunch. You better be with your hood. You know what I say? Go to bro, the highway. Y'all better. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Roosevelt. When I went to Roosevelt, that shit looked like uh, yeah, yeah. What's that move with Mister Clark? Uh, high school high. <laughs> Yeah, before he before he turned to school, uh, that's how Roosevelt looked. Before he uh, yeah, turned it around and and cleaned it up, it was it was like that, bro. Roosevelt, bro, Carter pulled up one day, and 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 I went to Roosevelt the year New Orleans was there. Uh, we had a ride with uh, uh New Orleans, bro. Dallas is the first place where I've ever seen gay gangsters that can fight. <laughs> hey boy, you ever seen a gay hood? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, motherfucker. Yeah. I ain't scared of shit and be gang gang gang. What? Man, man, uh, man, one of them gay crips would beat the shit out you out of Dallas. That motherfucker got blue waves, raw blue waves, and he will beat the and got goals in his mouth and I'll beat the shit out your ass. Yeah, I seen that that was at Roosevelt. I saw some goddamn gay uh motherfuckers fight hard as shit. Yeah, but Roosevelt was a motherfucker, bro. Oof. Roosevelt is a mu- and I used to go to uh pizza uh pizza uh pizza palace. Pizza. It's right around the corner from Roosevelt. You know Roosevelt is like in a yeah, well, it's hills. yeah motions yeah. motions right across the street. Mm. Motions is that the name of the gas station? I don't know the name of the gas station, but I know high uh, hills the area. They call it high heels over there by Roosevelt. Roosevelt is the roughest school I have. Mo- Maceo was player. It was a bunch of, it was a bunch of get money dudes there. But Roosevelt, it was straight gutter. Mm-hmm. It was gutter. It was gutter gutter. It was gutter. I'm talking about. It was a lot of riots on that uh, campus. But uh, but yeah, yeah I mean, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this interview, man. I'm glad we could link. Uh. I just really had to reach out to you just from just because man your story touched me and the way you doing content uh unapologetic kind of, yeah it spoke to my spirit like just it ain't, it ain't no bullshit you know gotta be uh, a way. i ain't gonna fake it or play around bro even when people get t- i know people get tired of it. yeah i was talking that black power that's how I, everything in by every time you make a video about boxing he want to talk about some racism i always want to talk something about about three? Yeah. It, it's this, this because you know, I'm and I, I ain't trying to be like this with say cheese and DJ academics and Vlad, but them niggas ain't never been through nothing like them. Hell niggas ain't, nah. like, hell like, nah. Nah. say it's, cheese, it's like, all them dudes like, is square, rainwater, he, all them dudes is squares, them dudes squares, all of them, Charlemagne the guy, all of them. So it's like, you know, only I feel like. It's select few people that can really, really. It's hard to speak on street shit. You ain't never been street. It's hard to speak yeah. on. Yeah. It, 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 like gang banging. Yeah. Being being in a gang, being a part of some, having motherfuckers around you, going through beefs, going through motherfuckers dying around you, all that shit. Yeah. So like when you came out, it, it's like a breath of fresh air because not only did you go through it, but you're not praising it. And it's like, say, man, I've been through everything, and it's just like you gotta, you gotta, you just really got some, man. And I just really just want to let you know, man, keep going, because people like me, like shit, people that's trying to transition, people that's feeling bad and feeling fucked up for even, because I ain't gonna lie to you, they they keep it in our face to be in the hood, to be street, and uh, say, bro, say, bro, I want I want you to know, bro, uh, you got my uh number. I want to say I got your number. Oh, I ain't text your number yet. I'm gonna text it, and so you'll have my number, bro. You can call me anytime, bro. Anytime, anytime you feel like you just need somebody to talk to, you feel like you're going through something, you feel like you want to, you know what I'm saying? You're wrestling with this hood shit and wrestling with changing, bro, because changing is hard, bro. I, bro, I, I was selling, yeah, I didn't, man, I didn't done shit in the midst of my try. I don't, do, I, I'm against it now because I've got yeah. stronger. But when I got out of prison, bro, I sold. I've I've done shit, bro. I was hustling. Yeah. I was robbing. I was doing a lot of shit in the midst of. Cause when I got out of prison, I was twenty three. Uh, I was still weak. I had just learned the knowledge. 
So I'm still, once shit got wrong at a job, I'm ready to hustle. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of shit I'm still struggling with. Oh, uh, shit. Matter of fact, uh, <laughs> what? I'm going to have to tell you that off camera. There's a yeah. lot of shit I'm struggling with, boy. There's a lot of shit I'm struggling with, boy. It's about getting some money and, and making a way out of some shit, bro, because it's a struggle out here. And so, so that's why I don't judge a motherfucker how he get his money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, bro, I'm 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 gonna make sure I text your number so you can talk to me anytime, bro. I, I definitely I I want I, I want I want you to help me like I want to help you. We can help yeah. each other. Bro. We can be a motivator. Yeah. Well, I get to man. I'm ignorant too. <laughs> <laughs> I love my people, bro. Yeah. I will I will fuck off one of my people for disrespecting me out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying, like. Going to the store is dying. I try to tell my wife, don't even, I don't even go to gas stations at night, bro. Mm. Especially on the weekend. Like, I don't go to clubs. I don't do none of that. Yeah. I don't go Me nowhere. Because I know at nighttime, that's when uh, Negroes get the most bold. They done got them drugs in their system. And them goddamn fentanyl moving in their bloodstream. And they, and they around their homies. And everybody tough around their homies. So yeah. I don't look wrong at nobody. I don't go to the gas station. I get my goals. I get my shit early in the day. Uh yeah, so <laughs> I don't go to club. Yeah. I stay out of situations because I know motherfuckers ignorant, and I know I'm not gonna play with you dudes out here. I take your mm -hmm. life, bro. If you play with me, yeah, yeah, I love my people, but I take my people like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's hard balancing that shit when these motherfuckers ignorant out here. These motherfuckers mm -hmm. are starting too. So anytime, yeah, anytime, uh, you can call me. We go wrap this interview. They got some good shit. When every time when I premiere it, I'm gonna let you know. When I chop up clips, I'm gonna let you know. Uh, hey, and I'm gonna share it on my uh, channel. Man, I I really appreciate every it. Every time, man. every video you uh drop, I'm uh, uh, I'm gonna share it. I'm gonna share it for sure, for sure. Man, you just gotta I really tell me. appreciate I you. Gotta do, you gotta tell me how to do some more of this technical shit. I'm still learning. Yeah. This shit. Hey, yeah, I don't man, know I do you. all your graphics and I what, like whatever you need, man. Uh, because I I feel like man, hey man, it's it's only a matter of time because ain't nobody giving it up like like you giving it up in that in that space when it comes to boxing because it's shit, it's a lot of lame niggas and that shit do. I was trying to listen yeah. to a couple more people, but I'm like, yeah, I really don't want to hear him talking. You know what I'm saying? So dudes, uh, try, dude, a lot of dudes try to get liked by everybody. That's their problem. Yeah. So man, yeah, it's a black dude right now that got a Canelo channel. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird out here, bro. You a black man and you got Mexicans in your chat, bro. Your whole chat full of Mexicans and you a black man and pimping off that uh, Canelo money. That motherfucker got fifty thousand. He can getting all kind of money out Canelo. Yeah, but, but yeah it's man, a you need graphics and stuff like that. Hit me up. Show yeah, me yeah, what yeah. you looking. Show show me what you want it to look like. I can mimic styles, uh, thumbnails. Uh -huh. I do. I do all this shit, and I just feel like, man, you, hey, you go get there because it, it's just you meet. It, I, I, it drew me to it. So you know, what I'm saying, I really fuck with it. Hey, man. hey, you dare that sound like Big Chief? Hey, you a fly youngster, bro? <laughs> hey, you sound like you got a little pimping in you. You know, they be pimping like a motherfucker down. But anyway, uh, yeah, you you dare that sound like Big Chief? <laughs> <laughs> been through it all, man. And he's just yeah. trying to get through it. Yeah, bro. Hey, you yeah. you done brought the hood at me. I, I was trying to. <laughs> no, nah, bro. But it's just like, out. yeah. Let that and, shit and out, like, bro. And it's like yeah, that's, that's that's what I'm trying to lean into. Like it's it's you know the internet. You know it's it's you know it's not a lot of us on the internet. So it's kind of like I'm trying to talk out of these motherfuckers talking. Yeah, like, bro. Yeah. It's like, hard, bro. So authentic. So it's like, man, I, I, I was drawn to this shit. And I, I realized I had to be, bro. Before I even started the channel, I'm like, man, I ain't finna come on this motherfucker playing. I'm not gonna play to be. I'm not gonna play nice just so motherfuckers like me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to be a kiss ass. Mm. I'm. I, I'm just gonna. Cause a lot of these dudes be weird, bro. They be weird on this internet. Yeah. They be knowing the truth but still speak lies, just to get accepted and shit. So I, I I try to speak the truth, bro, as I know it. Yeah, even if it hurts, even if people say say I ain't fucking with you no more, if I feel like what I'm saying is the truth, bro, it is what it is. Man, you, know? but you gotta stand man. on some. You gotta stand on some. But yeah, man, we gonna we gonna wrap this, man. I just had the link with you. Uh, 
You know me. Sure. Hey. We can do it again, bro. Hey, whenever you, I'm man. It's, it's all good, bro. And I'm finna. Soon I get out this, I'm gonna text your number. Soon as I get out right. this, I'm, I'm gonna text you my number, bro. All right, that's a bit appreciated, man. And keep doing what you doing, man, because people watching, man. Already, bro. Much love and appreciation. All right, same to you, man. All right.